decisions, great mound visits, great job not letting the best player beat you. This one crushed. Out to right field. Seventh pick of the 2023 MLB Draft, the Detroit Tigers select Kevin McGonigal, a shortstop from Monsignor Bonner High School, Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. Two balls, two strikes to Bryce Harper. Suarez delivers, swing and a drive, left field, it's deep, it's going, yes! and it is gone! Yes! yes! It is Bedlam at the bank as Bryce Harper has put the Phillies on top! Are you kidding me? Oh, his 10th career home run in the postseason! And he may never hit a bigger one! What is up, Delaware County? And welcome back for another episode of Delco Baseball Now. My name is Brennan Ricciardi. I am joined by Ben Thorpe. And Ben, up? this is the high school episode. Oh, uh, what? This is, I mean, at the end of the day, like our bread and butter is high school. You know, we had a lot of fun with the Little League guys this summer. We had a lot of fun, you know, with some of the college baseball and the Delco League. But, like, this is this is what pays the metaphorical bills. Oh, yeah, 100%. This is also maybe the first time where we have to potentially get yelled at by people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but. Hey, listen, uh, at the end of the day, you know, drama creates uh, content, right? Yeah, like, yeah that's, we're, we're in this for clicks. So. I mean, well, yeah, well, <laughs> no, I mean, not uh, at all. <laughs> well, in, in the terms of power rankings, someone's going to be pissed no matter what. That's just the yeah, name of the game. Yeah. It's just like, I think what what people get upset about is when you say something and you don't back it up or you don't mm-hmm. justify it. You know, we're not we're not really pure hot take artists, I don't think. Uh, but I think that you know we do a good job at explaining our reasoning. And at the end of the day, people can disagree with that, yeah. but that doesn't mean that we didn't put in the effort to uh, to look it up. Yeah, those we we definitely have uh, research for what we say. Yeah, uh, I spent probably my entire day at school just like pumping out game changers and max preps uh shout out to all the teams that you know publicize their their game changers i promise we're not going to sell your info to other coaches but it is good to be able to have the uh the statistics out there uh but before we get started a couple quick shout outs we got the merchandise store up and running opening day is right around the corner we got everything you could possibly ask for in terms of merch you know t-shirts hoodies sweatpants jackets hats uh, we got dog merchandise. We got like more like home accessory, like kitchen stuff. And uh, you know, what, what do you think is the best item we got here? Well, I can show off. Oh yeah, the show phone the phone case. case. We, got we got the phone, the phone case. case here. Uh, so many different models. It's available. protected. I've dropped it a couple times and hasn't broken. So like, definitely on purpose, right? <laughs> uh, no, not at all. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got for all different iPhones. So uh, this is my favorite personally. But um, there, we I, you really can't go wrong with any of them. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I like, uh, well, I'm waiting for the uh, the bomber jacket to come in, yeah. which I'm really excited about. But overall, I don't know, I, I like the golf shirt just because it's one of the few things where we could have every color we wanted. I think there's like 15 options for different mm-hmm. colors to uh, to represent whatever whatever team, whatever school, whatever community you want to show some love for. That is, uh, that is the goal here. Uh, and as always, we're looking for more sponsors. We always got, you know, uh, plenty of wall space here. We got, you know, time for ad reads, whether it be, uh, you know, something that you were to record and give to us, something that you want us to read, something just to help support us. You know, we're, we're doing all this out of pocket. Uh, and obviously, you know, that's not a, a sustainable long term plan. We're, we're fine doing it for now. But if we want it to uh, to continue for as long as we plan on it, which is for the rest of our existence on this planet, then we got to, you know, protect ourselves and uh and hopefully, you know, get something good. We can easily be bought. Yeah, we are easily, very, very easily bought. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll wear a different, I'll wear a t-shirt with an ad. I'll, I'll eat food. I'll drink whatever you put in front of me. We, we you will know. sell our souls. Yeah, oh yeah, we are <laughs> corporate America. Come on down. And we, we will. Just yeah, whatever you got. Yeah. All right. Well, with that being said, it's time. We got a lot of teams to cover here. We're going to cover every team at Delco. Some teams that might technically not be Delco, but, you know, we're yeah, close enough. So we got the whole Central League. We got the whole Del Val. We got our Delco teams in the PCL, and we have our Delco teams in the Interact. We also put Malvern Prep in because they have Delco guys and because they're they're sick at baseball. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's pretty much yeah. not, not to sugarcoat it, but like. Yeah. You know, every Delco team is gunning for them. So mm. might as well. Might they've, as well. They've scheduled a bunch this, this year. I yeah. I think Strathaven's opening day for them. Or at least There's a scrimmage, but like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We'll get to uh see them out on the field there. But 
We're going to start off with the core. Uh, we're not going to waste any time here. We're getting right into the Central League. We got a 12-team league. Strathaven was your champ last year. For the sake of the preview, we're going to go in reverse order. So we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. Uh, apologies in advance. We did our best to try and get everybody. And, you know, it's it's pretty hard to keep track of every every guy in Delco. But we're going to, you know, we're going to talk about uh, guys that graduated. We're going to talk about guys that we, for the teams that had their JV stats available. We'll talk about the, uh, the you know, the guys that were great on JV last year that will probably get their opportunity to, uh, to you know, show what they can do this year. And then also the, uh, the returning players. Now, if we don't mention you, you know, I was kind of in that same boat. I mean, I was a junior on JV hitting like 300-ish. So, you know, it probably won't pop off the table, but all that really matters is what you do out on the field there. You can go from, you know, JV to uh, to all conference just, just like that. Mm-hmm. So it's not about whether you're on the first episode, it's on the last episode, right? Yeah, that's, a, that's if we leave anyone out, it's in no way disrespect. I think we kind of did our best to cover everyone we possibly could. Um but yeah, man, if you if you ball out like you we will be talking about you at some point. Use us as bulleted more yeah, material yeah, if you like, have to. You know, take it personally. I, I swear, I, I won't be offended. You know, if we co- come try and interview after you, you know, interview you after a game and you say, Oh, you didn't you weren't talking about me back then, you know, but hey, you know, I took that personally and that's all good. But uh Ben, you're gonna get us started here. You're gonna talk about the Pencrest Lions. Uh all right, yeah. So here with Pencrest, um bit of a tough twenty twenty three. Uh, but looking to bounce back here, a couple key moments uh, from them last year. Uh, lost an absolute barn burner to Radner early in the year, 15-14. Um, but they also had a couple really good wins. They, uh, they beat Upper Darby 12-2. That was a playoff team. Beat Hareton 9-3. That was also a playoff team. Um, unfortunately, ended the season with eight straight Central League losses, including a 21-9 loss to Springfield. Bet, the, was, bet the over in Pencrest games. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm seeing. Putting up, they're putting up some runs and unfortunately giving up some runs, uh, but still, you know, again, looking to bounce back. Um, one of their main guys back is David Miser. Uh, he hit 405 with a 884 OPS and 41 plate appearances. Uh, lost a couple guys. Uh, Sean O'Donnell was the team leader in hits. He, uh, I guess, graduated. And Gavin Ray transferred to Carroll. He was, I guess, their number one pitcher. Um, they had a few different guys that they kind of threw out of that slot, but he was one of them. Uh, Nico Tazi, though, a brother of Roman Tazi, who is at Catholic now, uh, he's back. It's his senior year. He hit 352 last year, uh, 970 OPS, and, and 68 plate appearances. Ben Etienne, uh, no relation to Travis Etienne. <laughs> um, that we know of. That we know of, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll let him. Uh, I think it's spelled differently. It is spelled yeah, completely yeah. differently. That was also a big support of the brand, Ben Etienne. Oh, shout out to you then. Benny That's Baseball, time. Uh, 55, I think. No way. Yeah, That's yeah, so yeah. hard. Yeah. All right. Uh, but, yes, uh, he's a PSU Altoona commit. Congrats, congrats on that. I think we kind of already shouted them out. But, again, congrats. Solid year. Hit 283 and 48 plate appearances. He'll be back, ready to roll. And uh, the team leader in innings is back, uh, Josh Kalinowski. Kalinowski, Kalinowski. Let me guess, Kalinowski. Kalinowski. I think I did well in the first yeah. one. He's back. Uh, three forty-two ERA and twenty-eight point two innings pitched. When you consider the amount of runs they were giving up, uh, three forty-two is yeah. Honestly, solid. it yeah, is. That's, yeah. that's gonna be a that's gonna be a little shining star there. And then Gavin Brown is also back. Uh, he was second on the team in innings pitched, uh, four hundred three ERA in twenty-four point one innings. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, obviously last year, uh, Gavin Ray had some had some struggles with command, and, you know, I'm sure he'll be the first one to tell you that, and, you know, those two guys were able to step up and, yeah. and give them, you know, very quality numbers, and, you know, I guess in terms of of experience, like, they were, as we mentioned, first and second in innings pitched, and yeah. I think, you know, going through, if you want to call it growing pains, I mean, I'll take a 3-4-2 and a, and a 4 ERA mm-hmm. in, in high school baseball any, any day, and, and having that you know, that year to learn from that, I think they should be, uh, especially in a league where you, I won't say you only need two starting pitchers, but the majority of your conference yeah, games yeah. will be started by the same you, two people. You don't only need two guys, but you need minimum two guys. Yeah, you need like two starters. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think that's a really good, and sometimes, like, getting beat is good experience. So you, you, you need to learn. You need to, you know, either, you know, it gives you fire, get, you know, something to use in the off season. But I, I think... And you got two guys coming back with who one performed well and two got really good experience in what was a tough year and I think things should be looking up for them. Uh, they also have a, some young guys coming up from JV that might be able to uh, 
might be able to help out a little bit. Uh, Keen Feely, uh, the 3 7 and 36 innings down there. Uh, and Anthony Rossi had uh, 3 8 and 31 innings. He also hit 341. So, dual threat. Yeah, a little dual threat. We got some good names on this team. Uh, and the Jay, the Asher Win is a fantastic That's baseball wow. name. And the fact that he hit 417 with an 1158 OPS. All right. I- I'm rooting for this guy solely based on his name. Know nothing else about him whatsoever. It's got to be good. Yeah. Uh, Cooper Biddle, I'm, I'm assuming related to, to uh, Dylan Biddle, who pitched against us when uh, uh, I was a senior. He was a, I want to say he was a sophomore, and he pitched at uh, Goldie Beacom. Okay. And he yeah. was he was on, uh, I believe he was on the Aston Valley Knights team. We played him in the finals. I'm not positive, but I, I'm pretty Might sure that he was on yeah. that team. But uh, Cooper hit 412 with a 940 OPS. They got some dudes that, yeah. that look like they could be ready to step up at the plate. Yeah, and that's also uh, J.C. Fox, another another great really name, good. man. That's not just J.C. It's J.A.C.E.Y. That's a uh, but still, great name. And he, I guess, led the JV team and uh, hitting with 419. So they got some guys that are going to come up and help. I think they're still going to be a little young, um, but I expect them to be more competitive. This I, year. Like, I don't think they're going to be 4 and 12 bad. No, th- you no know, they're going to be a little. Are bit. they going to be a playoff team? Maybe, but I'm not sure that that 4 and 12 is going to be where they're at. Uh, we'll no. see, though. We'll see. All right, let's move on to here to team to finish in 11th, also 4 and 12, is the Radner, the Raptors now. Not the, I think, were they the Red Raiders or just the Raiders? They were the Raiders. Because I know Ridley's the the Green Raiders. Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. Radner, they're the Raptors now. Uh, They were a very, very young team last year. They, they, uh, they had some, some key wins though, that kind of, you know, gave the young guys experience. I was talking to uh, Ant Greco, assistant coach uh, who I played summer ball with about the team. And he's like, yeah, like he even said before the year, he's like, yeah, like we're not going to be very good this year, and I don't really think anyone's expecting us to be very good, but it's about finding the guys who are going to be a part of the future when, you know, things are starting to go better. Um, as we mentioned, they had a, a 15-14 win against Pencrest very early on. They also beat Marple, playoff team, 7 nothing, a complete game shutout, uh, 11 strikeouts by Danny Armstrong right. at Marple is a very gutsy performance, and, um, you know, the, the young talent on this team is very fascinating because Teddy Monahan. At 345, he got on base 48% of the time with a 904 OPS as a sophomore. Joe Krasowski, 322 average, sophomore. Austin Havertine led the team in innings pitched as a freshman with 40.2 innings pitched. And, you know, PBR has his fastball at 87, only 11 walks in those 40 innings. I mean, as a freshman pitcher, it's hard to ask for much more than that. No, I mean, that's like, that's insane. I did not know. I mean, especially like, you're already 87 at that point. You've got a good, pretty good year. Like that's, that's you got three more years to yeah, grow. Yeah. You know, um, Danny Armstrong, second on the team in innings pitch. Guess what? He was a sophomore. 3.86 ERA in 32.2 innings pitched. You know, I think if both of those guys take a leap, it doesn't even have to be a giant leap, just mm-hmm. a leap forward. These guys, you know, have a very good chance to. I think for them, the goal should be just make the playoffs. You know, yeah. you don't have to have. Yeah. Crazy high expectations. Obviously, in any clubhouse, you're not going to like limit your ceiling. But you know, these guys have two more years starting together mm-hmm. on the mound. I guess um, you know, I guess three years if you think if you think about it, right? No, two two years, two years. Because yeah, he'll be because yeah, he'll yeah, be a junior yeah, this yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, we also had Andrew Barbarisi. He's back. He had a uh, 4.35 ERA and 29 innings pitched. You know, every team needs that third guy. And, you know, overall, I think the offense on this team might take a little bit to, to get going. But if you look down on JV, even the arms down there. So we had Ryan McWilliams had a .56 ERA in 25 innings. Matt Maslow had a .65 ERA in 32 innings. Blake Havertine, I'm guessing they're twins because they are both they were both freshmen last year. Maybe they're twins or cousins or something like yeah, that. Yeah, um, 222 ERA in 41 innings pitched. Uh, Eli Frankel hit 364. Jacob Fari hit 302. But the bottom line is, I think that the young arms here are very exciting. Not, you know, just for this year, but going forward. Yeah, it's going to be really, I think this is another, I think for them, I see this is like another building block year. I think like next year and the year after, probably ones where they're really going to compete. Um, but yeah, I think that they're going to be really fun to watch i think at least on the pitching side the offense again like you said they're a little bit young and they got some other they got some more steps to take but they're they're gonna be a really interesting team i think they should be in every game yeah you know yeah. uh they kind of remind me in a sense of it's kind of a weird comparison but 
during those years where the Cubs were starting to get good, there mm-hmm. was like the one year where you're like, all right, we're bad, but we have good players. The next year is the year where they made the playoffs. They got, I think they got smoked by the Mets. The next year after that was when they won the yeah. World Series. So it kind of has that feel where like last year was the year where you're like, all right, we got some guys. This is the year where, hey, we start winning some more games that, mm-hmm. you know, don't feel like, I don't want to say flukes because that's not true, but start winning more games where it's like, hey, like we're, we're, we're not winning this game just because like we had a couple plays go our way. Like yeah. we're just better than you. And then I think next year could be the year where they're really like, hey, like we got a shot to win this conference mm-hmm. just based on the arms that we have. Yeah, I, I agree. I think this is going to be a year where it was like really, you know, let's go out, compete, try and raise that win total. Yep. All right, Ben. Uh, we did this specifically. I, I want you to talk <laughs> about the Springfield Cougars here as your uh, yeah. as an as an uh, as an alum. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited for them this year. I think last year was they were six and ten. Um, started zero and four, and then just ripped off. I mean, three huge wins, and I guess they beat Lower Marion, Garnet, and Stoga. Who it's two were, playoff teams. Yeah, two playoff. Yeah. Stoga not make. I playoffs? don't believe so. No. no. Okay, but they were borderline. So yeah, yeah. Two playoff teams on borderline playoff team, including Lower Marion, who got a win in six A. Um, which is very hard to do, as we know. Um, and I was at the Garnet game, and just watching them play, like you could tell it was not – they weren't a team that was one and four in the league. You know, like they were yeah. a little bit more talented. Um, that, was, that had to be the highlight of their year, right? Oh, that, yeah, that, that win. was an yeah. awesome win. Uh, but then, again, they're, they're a team where – I guess there's a couple games where you probably wanted the over in. Uh, we talked about the win against Pencrest. That was kind of a crazy one. And they had an even crazier one that they lost 17-12 against Haverford. 17-12. That nice. was – I remember doing the write-up for that. That probably took like, an hour to write up. Uh, <laughs> so much going was, on. I think it was like a walk fest. Like, that was kind of the part. But, like, it, that was, it was just a lot of – I don't know. Just a lot going on in that one. But – they played a lot of really close games, and I think I, I told you before, the most they lost by all year was five. So yeah, yeah, no, they weren't getting blown out. They just, you no, know, they yeah. didn't have the firepower to uh, to hang with some of the teams. Yeah, and that's, that's, I think they, they competed, and they do bring back a decent amount of, uh, so they ended the season on good momentum, and then they do bring back a decent amount of guys. Headlined by Sean Williams, uh, is committed to Seton Hill. Had the, so he started that game against Haverford, um, didn't go great, and you know kind of made the numbers look a little rough. But he's a very good pitcher. I think he showed that against Strathaven. Uh, ended up going six, one unearned, uh, and a one nothing loss. Yeah, I mean, if you take that Haverford game out, the, that ERA looks a lot oh, better. Yeah. You know, just one one day, you don't have it. It happens. Yeah, and that's kind of the reality of like playing in high school too, where you only get. I don't know. Like, There's not a big sample yeah, size. Six, seven know. starts. So if you have a bad one, which everyone does, that number goes yeah. through the roof. Uh, Matt Bean's also back. He was a team leader in hits. He hit 397 with a 1.1. I, I I've got him st- stumbling over this. A 1-1-2-4 OPS. Uh, two homers, 70 plate appearances. So that led the team as well. Yeah, I actually met him this summer because I worked at the, uh, oh. the, big, the big 26 showcase uh, in Harrisburg, and he was... I think the only Delco rep this year oh, wow. playing the showcase. So I got to meet him and his family there. Um, very cool event. But, yeah, I mean, an 11-24 OPS as a junior, like, you got to yeah, imagine. Uh, I don't believe he's committed. Uh, I, I think that there was actually a possibility that he could try and play club at Penn State oh, nice. uh, the last time I talked to him. But, you know, he, he also led the team in ERA. Yeah. 297 ERA in 30.2 innings. I think he has a very good chance to uh, potentially make our all-Delco list yeah, uh, at, the end, at the end of the season. Yeah. We'll have him on that. We'll have eyes on him for the uh, two way position. If we're if we're gonna do a two way, oh, position. we should, we should, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So in addition to him, Jake Adams is back. He hit three hundred nine in sixty six plate appearances uh, at eight hundred OPS. He was really one of the main guys on that offense. I think he he produced a lot when you know in games they won. Uh, Ethan Marshall's also back. He hit three hundred eight, and Vinny Valerio is back. He hit three eighteen. What a great name, Vinny oh, Valerio! Yeah. I have no idea what he looks like. No idea what position he is. I'm going to say off the top of my head, I'm feeling speedy midi- middle yeah. infielder. Just, I, I'm pretty sure he played football too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my brother actually coached him in like SAA. Oh, really? So I yeah. just that that name just sounds like a, a smooth fielding shortstop. But um, I think he's an outfielder. Close so, enough. Yeah, you're, you're there. <laughs> he's uh, fast. Yeah. Fast. That's all I needed. We're, we're, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna go on speed. Um, and then uh, interesting one for I guess the kind of a, one of the younger guys. Nick Course was a freshman. He played a bunch of games for them. Uh, hit two oh six, but 
you know, I think like, especially in high school, as you get older, that's going to go up. Most Just, freshmen are on JV or freshman yeah, team. Yeah, so I'll take a 206 yeah, average. I was going to say, he's starting on varsity. Yeah, so well, like, and especially, they gave him 46 ABs, which just kind of shows as a freshman how like high they view him mm -hmm. and the trust that they had in him. So I think that's uh that's a very, they're very promising, and I'm sure that he'll get more opportunity this year. And uh, unfortunately, Springfield did not have the JV stats uh, available, so we don't have too much more to add in terms of the young guys there. But I don't know. I, I think it's another team that could be due for some positive regression, some better luck, and uh, and have that you know talent coming back. Yeah, I think that's one of those. Uh, really, for them, you know, they they were very competitive last year. I think now you need to turn those close games that you lost into close games you win. I, I think that's really just pulling out a couple more of those important ones there. It's going to make the difference for them. I think this is a very good team, a very competitive one, and hopefully when we see you competing for playoffs. All right, we're moving on to the ninth place team. We got the Haverford Fords. Now, last year, they, they walked off Ridley on opening day. They had uh, a, a huge win against Upper Darby. They beat them by 10 in a game where Chris Chung started. Now, last year, he was virtually unhittable. Yeah. So I think that just showed even more, uh, you know, what, what they were able to do. Uh, at some points offensively, as you mentioned, they beat Springfield 17-12. and 12, But, you know, they, they got some holes to fill in this team. They lost Ethan Mahan to Rhode Island. Last year, he didn't he didn't pitch as much. He was having some, uh, some arm issues, and he's now at Rhode Island. He hit very well for them, as did James Pantano, who I believe, uh, I think is at Penn State now. I don't think he's playing. I think he's just at Penn State. And Braden Foxwell, who I think is at Chestnut Hill. So they were the top three leaders on the team in hits last year. And they have to replace all those guys. They also lost Joe Barnes, who threw 36 innings, which was 16 more than anyone else on the entire team. So they have a lot of at-bats and a lot of innings to fill. They got Will Hoffman back. He is a commit of uh, Jefferson University, D2 Jefferson. So they'll need him to kind of step up and take over that ace role. They also had Gavin McClafferty. He didn't pitch too much, only 11 innings, but a 3-1-8 ERA. So he could potentially kind of look to uh, to get into that number two role. But one player that I'm very excited to watch is Shane Durkin because I just saw a video come across my timeline of him hitting a baseball 97 miles an hour as a sophomore. And I, I forget who it was. I, I believe it was, I think it was Ethan Mahan because he was on Wayne. So someone told me, that I believe is Ethan, that the second they saw him play as a freshman, they said he's going power five. Oh, wow. That was, you know, very high praise yeah. uh, as a freshman. He hit 286 as a freshman. Uh, he got uh, 420 on base percentage and a very, very high ceiling. And I think that Haverford could use some star power there. You know, it feels like they always have a lot of very good players. But, like, when was the last time someone came out of Haverford that you're that went, like, high D1? Like, someone, like, you know, a true, like, I feel like, unfortunately, like, a lot of them transfer, like Jared Sweeney, you know, yeah. like uh, Mike Anderson would have gone to Haverford. Uh, I, I feel like they could use like a, like a Chris Zepito, like someone to kind of like turn the perception of the program around and make people want to stay. Yeah, no, I agree. And, uh, you know, he might be the guy to do it. I think that's uh, it's a huge freshman year. Obviously, the potential's there. The raw just skill and talent is there. Um, so I, I think he's a guy who can look to like make a really big step this yeah. year. Jimmy Boyle also, as a freshman, hit 444. It's only 25 plate appearances, but a 1065 OPS. Again, not that big sample size, but you got that experience now. You you got that confidence. Having that confidence, like seeing, like, hey, I I did this. You know, 25 plate appearances. I would say that's still about you know maybe like half of what you'd get in a normal year. Maybe like a third, depending on yeah. how far you go. So enough comfort that you can go into a season saying like, hey, like I feel very good about what. You know, I, I did last year, and it's time to build off that. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is this is going to be a young team, uh, a bit of a rebuilding year. On JV, they had some guys do some good things. Ryan Cassidy hit 367 with an 1170 OPS. Uh, Rocco Kelleher, I'm pretty sure I played against his brother Danny at some point, whether it was Legion or high school. Uh, big year for him. He hit 435 with an 1159 OPS, also a 344 ERA. Uh, a great name here, Chet Ebert. Fantastic name. Yeah. 371 average uh, with a 1006 <laughs> OPS. And Jake Lasicki uh, had a .9 ERA in 23 innings right. pitched. So someone that could potentially join that rotation for the Fords. Um, I think this is in, in a similar boat to Radner where I just don't see them, especially in such a crowded 6A field, making a playoff appearance or playoff run this year. But I, I think that you know finding the pieces 
that are going to be a part of of the future is important. And I think it's also important to note that, you know, as harsh as it is, not every year has to be a playoff year. You yeah. know, sometimes you have to understand that, you know, you, you need to develop guys and, and get them ready for the next step. So... Uh, also, shout out Will Tamar. He's a Misericordia commit uh, along with along with Jake McDonough. He'll be, I believe, at shortstop this year. So you know they got some they got some guys that have experience. They got some young flashes. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. It could be a sleeper team. Yeah. You know, prove us wrong. Yeah. No, yeah. that's be. I, I think this is a team that you know. Yeah. It really could be could be a sleeper, like kind of dark horse type thing. It's. It'll be interesting to see. I think. I think we have a lot of. That's a cool thing is that we have a lot of really interesting teams this yeah. year. Yeah. All right, you got number eight here. Let's hear it. Yep. So uh, at eight, we got Conestoga. Uh, they finished last year six and ten. Um, kind of a tough end of the season. They were in a pretty good spot and lost six straight in the Central League before they beating Haverford on their last uh, day of the season. But they have some really good wins in there. They beat Ridley 11-1. Uh, they beat Marple 10-8. And, um, you know, yeah, it's just one of those tough years where I think sometimes things spiral out of control. Yeah, it snowballs, bit, yeah. you know. Um, but I think, you know, they should have some guys back. Uh, they have a couple of significant losses. Uh, they lost Dylan O'Mara. He was second on the team with 23 innings. Uh, they lost Ian Campbell, who has taken his talents and a very solid mustache to King's College. It's a nice little tidbit there. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that. But Great mustache. Really? Yeah. To, if there's a way we can edit that, just oh, like throw that on there. Producer's note. I got you. Yeah. Um, they lost, right, how do you say, uh, Kichi? I think it's Queasy. Queasy? Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, they lost John Queasy, who is at Randolph Macon now, really solid D three school. Um, and then they lost a couple other guys: uh, Kyle Morrow, Alex Simon, uh, Charlie White, and James Stegerwald. Uh, they, you know, all I think contributed in different ways last year. So it's going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit tough to replace some of those guys. Uh, but at the top of the uh, pitching staff. They got Jake Friel, who's a Sacred Heart commit. He's a dog. Oh, dude! Like we saw him. I guess we saw some videos of him in the summer, going like eighty-five from just whatever this angle is. Weird lefty yeah. arm slot. Yeah, great hockey player too. Really? Yeah, yeah I was I at my uh, my neighbor's grandkids played on Con or he's the goalie for Conestoga, okay. and I just went to a game and I saw this big dude with a Friel on the last name, like on this jersey. I'm like, that's got to be the same guy. But um, yeah, no, he's he's from what I've seen, just kind of like. Chris Saley, like a little wonky. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's a really good, yeah. yeah. I mean, 235 ERA last year, uh, Sacred Heart D1 commit. He's going to, you know, have to be the, the guy. Yeah, uh, I, th I think, you know, he's got the numbers to prove that. I think he will step in and do well. He's going to be a very formidable number one for them. Um, and then following it up, we got uh, Richie Bibaroche. Bibaroche? Sure. All right. Following up, you got Richie Bibaroche. Uh, he's back. He has a decent numbers and limited work, only 14 innings, about a 150 ERA. I think he started pitching a little bit later towards the – I remember he, I think he had a really good start against someone. Um, but another guy that, you know, I think probably fits in as their number two. He should contribute very well. Um, and then John Richmond, he only threw nine, uh, nine two-thirds last year, but he's committed to Shenandoah, who, I mean, they're a D3 powerhouse. Yeah, I top ten. Played against them all, I guess, well, three of the four years of college. They have a bunch of dudes all the time. So, like, committing there is no joke. Um, so that's going to be a, a big, you know, hopefully he fits in for them somewhere. Uh, Henry Melrose should also get some work on the on the bump. Uh, you know, so it's a, ro it's a rotation with a decent amount of depth. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that, you know, having that number one, especially in, like, as we mentioned, a league where most of the time you're only really using two starters in a league is very um, – very important. They also have James Queasy back, the brother yeah. of John, who was the team leader in hits as a sophomore. So you got to think that he's got you know the ability to take an even bigger step up this upcoming year. He hit three forty last year. Yeah, that's what I, and I remember like the two of them just having very good years. Mm -hmm. Just a tough. Uh, tough they would they'd hit lead off and clean up, which is probably <laughs> the two most important you know arguably positions that you have there. Yeah, that's. Uh, Queasy family just keeping kind of so good mm -hmm. baseball running yeah. right now. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I think he'll take another big step, especially after a big year like that in a sophomore year. Um, you know, a couple other guys, too. Uh, well, there's one other guy, Cooper Evers. Uh, he only had 22 plate appearances but had a 1-0-1-2 OPS. So, again, like, hitting the ball pretty well. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be an inexperienced lineup. I think guys are going to have to step up. Um, but – there is a chance that, like, that pitching staff, I think, can carry them. Yeah, well, and they also had some good JV guys. So I got to take this one. His name is Brendan. So Brendan hey, Sora, yeah. <laughs> uh, 1053 OPS, 
Chase uh, Sherney hit 389 with a 992. I think we might have a, a brother of someone we play against, Chase yeah, Ranton, because yeah, yeah. Blaze went to Conestoga yeah. uh, and I think is at, where is he at? He was at Montclair State. I think he's at Eastern now. Uh, and he hit 364, 1030 OPS. They had, as we mentioned, Henry Melrose. Um, he had a, a 198 ERA on JV, 1090 OPS on JV as well at the plate. JP Tinney, also a cool name. 340 average with 921 OPS. So I think that for this team to be successful, they're probably going to need some of these JV guys to just, you know, keep maybe not the same, you know, all having a, a above, you know, a thousand OPS, but uh, be able to just come in and immediately pr- produce. Yeah. And that some of those guys are definitely going to have to step up and put, you know, pretty good numbers in there. I think they're also going to need a lot out of their pitching staff. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to a perennial very, very solid team. we got the Garnet Valley Jaguars. Last year, they were 8-8 eight and eight in the Central League. Now, this is the first team on the list that made the playoffs. The Central League sent seven teams to the District 1 playoffs last year throughout 5A and 6A. Garnet Valley is in 6A. They were the number 22 seed of 24. They lost a heartbreaker to Downingtown East. They were up 4-2. to two. Going into the bottom of the sixth, they let up four runs in the bottom of that sixth and weren't able to score in the seventh. They uh, they had some key wins throughout the year, though. They beat Chris Cepito, which I, I don't know off the top of my head. I, probably his only loss of the year. Yeah, I can't I think, think of a lot. Of, no, I can't think of another yeah. team that would have beat him. They also beat Ridley, another playoff team, six to one. Now this is a very interesting team this year because they lost both of their main starting pitchers, both to Alvernia, uh, Shane McDermott. Had a 2.76 ERA in 43.2 innings. Logan Nelson had a 2.28 in 40 innings pitched. So they're going to need some of their guys to be able to step up. But as we're going to get to in a sec, the lineup is fantastic. So Cole Reber, uh, he had a solid showing sophomore year in 19 innings. Jack Krautzel is a Stevenson commit who had a 4.10 ERA in uh, 13 innings. They also have Nick Gordon, who's a Brandywine commit. Uh, he only threw six innings last year, but you know he's going to have his chances this year. On the offensive side, Drew Van Horn was the heart of the lineup. He's a Wayne guy, hit 383, 1177 OPS. But overall, outside of him and Logan Nelson, there's a lot of talent back on this lineup. Brady Thompson is what I like to call a new school hitter because he had uh, he he only hit 243, but he had a 1052 OPS, showing that you know he he hit five home runs in his sophomore year, a uh, big extra base hit machine, a lefty hitter in that Garnet Valley porch is, is heaven. And, yeah. you know, PBR had him at uh 94.3 exit velo. Ooh. I I'm, I'm getting Kyle Schwarber vibes from this yeah, guy. I kind of like that. You also know? a great actor. Isn't he the one? Yeah. yeah I remember <laughs> that's a good, that's a good call. There was uh he, he was trying out for the, the Christmas show. I think it was yeah. at Ascent, and he had the whole like facility, like, you that know, watching incredible. his audition. I, I completely forgot about that. Uh, come on the show and sing for us, Brady. <laughs> that'll be that'll be great content. But uh, a lot of young guys on this team. So Harrison Mall, great freshman year, hit 268 in 50 plate appearances. I want to say he'll be their shortstop this year with with Drew off to uh, off to Miz. I'm not positive on that. Chris Schaller, Shaler or Schaller, one of those three one options of, yeah. is uh, he's committed to Richmond. He had a good showing his sophomore year. Very similar to Maul, uh, you know, age-wise, statistic-wise, and I think that both of those guys are ready to take that that leap forward uh, and and be huge contributors for this team. Also have Logan Hamilton back. He had a nice season, 783 OPS as a junior. Got to shout out Nolan Carroll because he's the cousin of Media Little League <laughs> superstar outfielder Cole Carroll, who is just Delco's sweetheart this year. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, just keep, keep going up and down the lineup. Mark Zupo, Penn State Burks commit. Eddie Swartonevich. I would never have been able to say that last name. That was the one we were was, struggling I with d- last I DM'd year. Drew Van Horn. I'm like, hey, dude, like, how do I say this name? Uh, and Cole Lombardo got some time as a freshman year. I saw him pop up on uh, on Twitter, you know, a video of him at a showcase. He looks good. Justin Gretzky, Juco Bandit, Frederick College. Uh, my, my main note for this team is... The pitching is going to have some question marks going into the year, but I love this offense. Yeah, uh, they're going to be – I feel like it's not ridiculous to say they're probably going to be a top, I don't know, three. In the Central League yeah, offense, Central absolutely. League, probably top three. Yeah. I mean, they, they're bringing back guys. And the scary thing is, like, a lot of these guys we just mentioned, like, they're – they're going to be here for another year. Yeah. Like, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> I think that I think they have the potential to do it now, but then I would say, mm-hmm. you know, just looking ahead – 
this lineup even next oh, year yeah. would be fantastic. Yeah. But had some JV guys. We had some brothers. So Brady Krautzel is Jack's brother or cousin, I'm assuming. 356 average. Now, here's a name I hadn't heard of in a while. Aiden Bendo. Oh, Liam Bendo wow. was a stud yeah, when, he, when we used yeah. to play against him for Garden Valley. Uh, he played at St. Joe's. Aiden hit 306 on JV last year. Uh, it would be kind of cool if he's a shortstop, too, like Liam was. Uh, yeah. a very good player. Luke Vaughn hit 318 with a 922 OPS on JV. Connor Criswell had a 364 average and 872 OPS. It, it seems like uh, Nick Gordon, the Brandywine commit, kind of bounced around maybe from varsity to JV or yeah. maybe got called up because he had time uh, doing both. But a 2-1-4 ERA in his 19 innings overall. Uh, I think this Garden Valley team will make the playoffs. Uh, I'm, at the moment, a bit concerned that they'll have the arms to get through a gauntlet in that 6A mm-hmm. bracket. But for right now, I, I think this team is very talented. And I think if you know they have some pitchers that are going to be able to give them quality innings, they can make a run, absolutely. Yeah. But for, for right now, uh, I will say they make the playoffs with a game or two, and I yeah. think that's a very successful year. I like that. I think with an offense like that, too, uh, it's great for a pitching staff where there are question marks because then you kind of have, like, they, they do provide a little bit of insurance. Yeah, it's a little breathing room. Yeah. All right, we got the top half of the league here. You got the Harriton Rams in sixth place. All Let's right. hear it. All right, yep. Leading off, they went, uh, well, I guess not leading off, but leading off the top half. Mm-hmm. They went 9-7 and seven, uh, last year, made the 5A playoffs, and just kind of lost, like, an insane. That game was bizarre. Yeah, I was watching on Game Changer. It was so, I mean, I, I wrote it down, but explain, like, this yeah, game made no so sense. We had uh, scoreless after one. All things looked fine, and then everything just went to shit. Uh, they scored five in the top of the top of the second. Allowed six in the bottom of the second. Ross Brotherston hit an inside the park grand slam in the top of that second inning, right? And then Leighton Coop hit a grand slam for Phoenixville in the bottom. Um, just. I did chaos. I mean, two grand slams in yeah. one <laughs> inning in a playoff <laughs> game is, is outrageous. I. That's just one of those ones where I think you kind of look around at the end and it's like, what just happened? What, yeah. like, that's a crazy one. But that, that is kind of the beauty of baseball. You, you get insane stuff like that. Um, so a couple guys they lost. They lost Finland to Roanoke. Uh, he had a two six three ERA in 37 innings of work. Uh, also lost Henry Wheeler. He had a four twenty ERA in 20 innings and hit three forty five. Um, so, you know, a couple of solid guys they lose, but I think, you know, the guys bring the coming back for them are really solid. They have as, as good of a top two as anybody yeah, on yeah, the mound, 100%. absolutely. Uh, and that top two is Charlie Belly. Uh, he was outstanding as a sophomore. 2-1-9 ERA in 32 innings. Uh, he's up to the upper 80s. He's going to be really good for them. You know, another, oh, okay. another one of the best pitchers in the Central League. And then right behind him, uh, Jack Uffberg. Uh, he is a Muhlenberg commit. Had a really good year as well, two seven five ERA, twenty innings. Um, yeah, I mean it's going to be a really good one too. Yeah, as, fair, and they both had experience as starters, mm-hmm. and they both you know did very well as starters. Yeah, it's yeah they're going to be solid. It's good as pretty much I think anyone we're going to have in the league. And then behind them they got a couple guys, or I guess they got Alex Johnson who should get an increased role. He had a one five six and in seventeen innings. I just feel like Harrington always has good pitchers. Yeah, you know, like yeah. going back, like when I was there, uh, Jack Ahanowitz, he got drafted by the Angels, right? Mm-hmm. Jonah Frankel had a great career there and and pitched at Washington. Uh, Don DiLoretto pitched at Franklin and Marshall. All those guys, like you know, you feel like they might not always outslug you, but they're you know they're always going to pump out very solid pitchers. Yeah, yeah, they they just I don't know what kind of like pipeline they got going there, but they always yeah. have dudes. So uh, and then they got two absolute dudes mm-hmm. this year. Um, and then offensively, they're going to be just as good. I think uh, we talked about Ross Brotherson. Uh, he's a Case Western Reserve commit who is a very good D three. Ohio, school. right? Yeah, I think it's in Ohio. Yeah, Ohio. Yeah. Um, so and he was not healthy the whole year, but when he was, was a monster. He had four eighty four, uh, one two eight nine OPS and thirty eight plate appearances at a home or a triple. And the uh, aforementioned yeah, I mean, twelve eighty nine OPS is outstanding, uh, and I think that that team they could have had an even higher seed, maybe even a bye week, if he was healthy the whole year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He he really added something really impressive to that lineup, and, uh, and they're going to keep going. Um, so we've got here. huge Delco baseball now fan. So shout out from us to uh, Bryce Siegel, big Delco baseball now supporter. Shout out Bryce. Let's go. You know, if you, listen, if you hit a walk off grand slam, we will claim you as you know one of our our top also, fans. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah, 100%. as a sophomore too. Yeah, that's, great year. So that's that's a little bit of a, like an investment on our part. Mm-hmm. You know, keep growing a little bit. 
and we'll have a well, one of our top fans will be a. He, he hit 345 with an 1142 OPS, but he it looked like he missed the majority of April. So they still made the playoffs. They you know were in a, in a playoff game with a good Phoenixville team mm-hmm. with their two best statistical hitters out at least a month. Yeah. Which that, is why I think we're so high on them this year. Yeah, I think that's like a – I think another good thing to add is just like a little bit of grittiness. Like yeah. Some of those guys like stepped in and like at least like kept things alive until they – you know, the, the big guys got back. I think they, Bryce was on JV to start the year based wow. on the stats that I saw. Uh, also – Delco baseball now writer Declan Wayman uh, is a senior. He plans to play for the club team at West Virginia. He's going to be helping us out a lot with writing about just Harriton and other, other Central League teams. I believe his uh, either half-brother or stepbrother uh, plays for the Haverford School too. So he, he helped us with some of those articles as well. So, uh, so shout out Declan. Uh, also another guy, I don't mean to steal your thunder here, but uh-huh. I, I know Mick Brunelli, he's committed to Del Val. That's a great name. I used to catch him. I, catch him, I used to coach him <laughs> at, at one of those Phillies baseball camps that I think was at Nell, I want to uh, say, and yeah, he was yeah. hysterical. He was probably like a middle school at that point, a freshman, so it's kind of cool to see you know him him come back. And I'm curious to talk to him as like a 18 year old, yeah. not a you know whatever it was like 13, 14. But um, but yeah, I mean, listen, two strong proven catcher mm-hmm. or stru- two strong pitchers, catcher coming back, meat of the order coming back. Hopefully everyone stays healthy, and I think this team is making the playoffs to 100. percent Yeah, and the uh, may- maybe the most Delco baseball now support. I don't know. Like we, we got, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we got I'll give our stra- I'm gonna say ones. our Strat Haven yeah, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah just yeah, because uh, they they you know have been uh, since. Well, honestly, it was because in 2021 it wasn't even called Delco baseball. Now I was doing something my friends called it was the Delco Media Group at the time <laughs> was. Um, we started with our fantasy football podcast, and then we did a bunch of Philly sports ones. Okay. And that kind of got me. Like That was the Drew Robinson one, yeah, like the Phillies yeah, yeah. one. And uh, shout out Breaking the Bank. And that's when I kind of realized I like doing this stuff. But once COVID kind of, you know, ended and, and we got back to real life, all my friends had, you know, real life things yeah. to do. Meanwhile, this was my now field. So that's how that's how Delco Baseball now started. Quick, uh, you know, quick tangent there. But we got the top five here. We got Lower Marion. So last year... They made the 6A playoffs as a 17 seed. They went on the road. Uh, I don't want to call it an upset because they played the number 16 seed. So they, but they did go on the road. They took down to Chamonix. Uh, East Carolina commit Van Wilner was outstanding in that game. He, I, I guess the plan was, and it's kind of smart to navigate the pitch count. They had Everett Whalen throw one inning and then Van through the last six, mm-hmm. which honestly is a very, very smart idea instead of, going the other way and having him go six innings yeah. and you know if you're if you don't necess- not that they didn't trust him but if you want to make sure that van ends the game mm-hmm. that's what you got to do um so they won that game then they advanced to number sh- number one spring Ford, where they lost 12 to 3 nothing to be ashamed of spring Ford's a powerhouse yeah, every year they're gonna be tough have you, have you played at their stadium before or been uh, there i have not i know i know what it looks oh, like awesome. I, so they couple- got stadium seats yeah like, they got lights oh it's awesome best best field in southeastern pa 100 percent uh so Here's the thing. Lower Marion, they lost two Division One players, but we're still high on them. Drew Hollowell is now at the College of Charleston, and um, excuse me, Sam Wright is at Quinnipiac. And, you know, they, they lost Everett Whalen as well, had a good 3-9-4 ERA. But it, it's funny that, like, you know, having an ace and a star pitcher like Van Wilner can really offset a lot of other issues on the team, you know? Yeah, that's – when you got a guy like that, you can – look past a few not everything but a few things I, I think you know he's a dude who and a couple other guys will talk about like that like you put him out against any team any day and you have a shot to win yeah uh henry rendell's also gone he hit 293 last year but they got isaiah negron back 321 era and 24 innings pitched so you know someone that can uh that, that i think that they could potentially trust to be that number two mm-hmm. pitcher uh jack shoals is a catholic commit he hit 347 last year also pitched a bit, uh, only seven innings, but I'd imagine he might have to uh, to add on to that a little bit. Toby Myers also had a bunch of extra base hits in the middle of that order, and he will be back. But they got some very good JV arms that I think could potentially come to help out Van this year. Angus Penn, outstanding name, uh, 124 ERA in 17 innings. Josh Cloud, another solid name. Okay. Uh, the headlines are writing themselves there. 20 <laughs> innings, 1.75. Uh, Gabe Martyr had a 295 and 21 innings. So I think that they potentially could uh, fill in either that number two or that number three spot on the team for the Aces. Uh, Braden Perry also hit 422, 1147 OPS on JV, 283 ERA is well pitching for them. And uh, we also had Calvin, uh, Calvin Rendell, who I'm imagining was probably related to Henry in one way, hit 400, near 1,000 OPS. Like a very good JV team. 
Matt Hartstein, 963 OPS. I think that, you know, they did lose some players, and this isn't to be rude, but could be, like, replaceable players. Mm -hmm. And if they get that similar production again with, you know, Van another year uh, into his development, Jack Scholes, like, I think this team will make the playoffs. I think they could go on a little run, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's uh, it's going to really just come down to, you know, who who can step up and replace what what they lost? Yeah, uh, I think this you know on paper. I think I mean we'll we'll get to our our power rankings a little bit later. Yeah. But you know this it's is a uh, this is a very good team, and I think last year you know should be con- I would say considered the floor. You know, like in, yeah. in the sense of yeah, like man, I, with the the core they have. Yeah, I think yeah. so. All right, uh, this was our fourth place team from last year. What do you got? Uh, we got the Ridley Raiders, uh, ten and six, made the six A playoffs as the twelve seed. Um, unfortunately, lost at home playoff game four nothing to number twenty one Saraton. Uh, but the, those teams kind of out in that area are all really big, stacked. big country yeah, boys. Yeah. Yep. So th- that's Tyler Summerall. Yeah, Upper Darby. Yep. Yeah. So you can you can run into some tough ones there. Um, but they have a new head coach, Upper Darby head coach Tom Carey, Marble Black Sox. Uh, has replaced Anthony Monzo, um, so he's going to you know, take over. Hopefully, they keep building on what they had. Uh, a couple of moments from last year, they beat Strathaven ten nothing. I was at this game. They smoked them too. Yeah, uh, that's a. I don't know. It's. I mean, that was a state finalist. It's, I mean, Haven went fourteen and two in the Central League last yeah, year. You know, yeah. like no team. You know, no, no team beat them like that. I mean, most teams didn't beat them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that was just winning it all would have been impressive. But winning like that, you know, shows the real talent they had. Um, had some win, uh, other wins against playoff teams: Upper Darby, Lower Marion, Garnet Valley. Um, but they did lose a decent amount. So they lost uh, their star lefty Mike Happerset to the sales. Uh, he had one one five ERA in fifty five innings. Also, the sales is becoming some sort of pipeline. For it them. is a little Delco powerhouse because that's the, they got. I think the one game they had Mike Hooker started, uh, Happerset pitched in relief, and Jeremy Stranick started at yeah. third base. Um, so. And I th- it's them and Miz in that conference, right? Yeah, it's them, Miz, I think. I just know it's like them two at the top every year. Yeah, I think Arcadia is in that now, okay. too. So that's, or are they in the other one? I, I always forget because there's two max. It's confusing. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a really good conference. That'll be a fun, fun, fun Delco. It's, Miz is definitely in there. So we'll have some Delco and Delco mm-hmm. bat matchups. Uh, they lost Jake Nauman. Um, he was second on the team in innings, had a 310 ERA. Uh, Ryan McNichol went to Chestnut Hill. He was more of a hitter, but uh, was third on the team yeah. in innings. Yeah, I mean, they have to replace their top three innings leaders, which is a very, very tall task. Yeah, that's that's tough. And, uh, I mean, they've had some good pitchers that have come in there, so hopefully there's more on the horizon. Uh, but, you know, they lost – Lost some good ones there, and lost some out of the lineup as well to McNichol, as we just talked about. Had a three forty average, nine sixteen OPS. Jeremy Stranick, who we also just mentioned, mm-hmm. is now starting as a freshman, which is a, like at any level in college is a huge deal. Uh, he hit three eighty one with an eight eight nine. Uh, Josh Geddes, Geddes, Geddes. As long as it's not Josh Giddy, we're good. Yeah, <laughs> Josh Geddes, who uh, hit three thirty three and forty eight at bats. He was throwing the team in hits. Uh, but they get Brian Cawthorn back. Uh, he hit 283. Had a couple really big games for them last year. Um, had a homer for them, so there's obviously a little bit of power. Uh, Mount St. Mary's commits. So we got a D1 guy, Danny Stickney. He's back. Uh, he hit 310 with an 873 OPS. Zach Ladislaw and Tyler McDevitt have some experience from last year. Um, but you know, a lot of guys are going to need to take a leap for this team to contend, I think. Yeah, and, and I think the JV team has a ton of talent. So Zach Bloom had a, a 141 ERA in 34 innings pitched. Mike McLaughlin, 162 in 26 innings pitched. Chris Kimmel was also at a 162 in 13 innings pitched. So I think, you know, those guys could potentially be inserted into that rotation. They kind of have to be yeah, at this yeah, point. You're not really going to um, have a choice. Dom Dispenza hit 421 with a 1094 OPS. Uh, Jake Shack hit 360, 1030 OPS. Tommy Wickham with a, a 354 average. So I like the talent we're seeing down there, and mm-hmm. I think that this is a team that is probably going to have uh, a, a little bit of a drop-off because, I mean, you know, they, they were the 12th seed, It's right? a lot to replace. Yeah, 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 it is a lot to replace. I still think, I mean, think about it. Like, they were the 12th seed out of 24. Mm-hmm. I think there's, I, I still think they're a playoff team, yeah. uh, but I think that, you know, they, they lost a lot of innings, and I think it's too early to say 
that I think they're going to have like a deep run. Mm -hmm. But I think that if if some of these young pitchers are able to uh, to come in and perform, that they have the talent and they got that chip on the shoulder from you know they got the yeah. playoff experience last year. You know, getting getting shut out on your home field will will kind of you know mm -hmm. pain fuels you in that in that regard. So I think right now I'm going to say they're a playoff team, might win a game or two, but you know until we see more of these pitching, it's hard to to ask them to run through, you know, the yeah, North Pens and the Spring Fords of the world, there's right? There's definitely a lot of question marks on the mound, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but, you know, the thing with that, and we kind of, I guess, I haven't mentioned it with some of the other teams, but, like, these teams that lose a lot of guys that were really good, you know, sometimes those JV guys are very solid players or guys that have grown in the past year that just haven't gotten the chance yet. Um, and, you know, we could be seeing that with a team like Ridley where, you know, most of their pitching – it was gone so maybe you know these guys just you know had to be down on jv and you know now now it's their time to shine i i think they'll be good i think they have the top end talent to compete again um uh, it is again i feel like a broken record but it's going to come down to a lot of some of these younger guys to step yeah. up well whatever the opposite of a team needing young talent to step <laughs> up that is what marple newtown is because so last year marple made the 5a playoffs they got the bye as the number four seed, they were upset by number 12, Oxford. It was a 16-8 to eight game at Marple. Um, the only player in Marple's 1-9 through nine starting lineup that they lost was Kevin Tarabarelli, who is actually now playing club for Delaware. Yeah. So if they make regionals, and so does Penn State, he would play against Owen Mathis uh, and Justin Brennan at some point in his college career. So a little, little Marple rivalry there. Uh, Jason Anderson actually is also club for Temple in the same region. But the, the top five most used pitchers from Marple are all back from last year. Oh, top five in innings pitched are all back, and rare. they only lost one hitter of the top nine. Oh. Jack Mahalik led the team with 36 innings pitched and had a 290 t, uh, 292 ERA in his sophomore season. Aiden Curran was second on the team in innings pitched. He had a 4-6 ERA, but he was a freshman. So, you know, you got to uh, imagine getting that experience mm -hmm. would be good for him. Uh, Northampton commit Aiden Pearson's also back. Uh, they call him Brick. Uh, they, they mentioned on the interview, they call him Brick, which I love. Uh, he was sick. third on the team with 22 innings. He had a 2-1-6 ERA, also plays the hot corner. Uh, as we talked to Paul DeFruccio, once again, more of a hitter, but he still had a 156 ERA in nine innings pitched. And another guy they mentioned to keep their eyes out for was Nick Puglise, who had a three ERA in nine innings. But, I mean, it's just like, I don't know if I've ever seen a team in high school return this many people before. This is absurd. Yeah, that's... I, I, it's rare. It's uh, the ultimate definition of we're running it back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's, I mean, yeah, I think we both got into it, but the team has a shot to really do mm -hmm. some damage this year. Uh, offensively, Paul DeFruccio, as mentioned, is back. He was on the show. He uh, had a 323 uh, batting average and, excuse me, an 843 OPS. Also, Bennett Cox, uh, you know, guest of the show, who was dealing with some arm injuries, so he didn't play the field as much last year. Should be back at shortstop. Great year at the plate, though. Uh, 375 average. At a 10-17 OPS with a homer. Very excited to watch Lucian Berger again, uh, their center fielder. He hit 293 with a 921 OPS. He's a big boy, uh, big and fast, which is a, which is a very good combo. And uh, another guest of the show, uh, Jason Bennett. Rowan commit hit 357. He had two homers last year, 948 OPS. And as mentioned, Aiden Pearson at the plate. I mean, these guys said it best when they were on the show. Like, this is... This is their year. This is their entire team running it back. They got the chip on their shoulder after a home playoff loss. They got the experience, uh, and I think they're in for a huge season. Yeah, I agree. I think this is a team that, you know, uh, they're going to be one of, if not the favorite for the conference. Yeah. Uh, some great names down on the farm on JV that might have to be put in the lineup just for existing. So we got Lou Deluzio outstanding uh yeah, that's real good and when you add in the fact that he hit 442 with a 1315 ops uh four triples and two homers I, listen i know all the seniors are running it back but they, they might yeah, have to yeah. find a spot for this kid with that that name and that combo um john anderson on uh, maybe related to jason hit 441 dayton fastbinder another outrageous right. outrageously cool name 368 average uh lucas lancaster 283 ERA in 17 innings. So not that they necessarily need the reinforcements, but, you know, it. yeah, and, and you also can't count on one through nine to produce, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's baseball. Like, you got guys that go into the year and you think they're one of your guys and they're not. And you got guys that you weren't even planning on them being a part of the picture. And next thing you know, they're they're starting, you know, a playoff game, right? Yeah. So 
I think there's a lot to like about this Marple team. The confidence is there. Mm-hmm. The character is there. Uh, and I think that they're, you know, if, if there were betting odds, I mean, they're either one or two. Yeah, 100%. I think them are, we'll get in the Haven, but yeah. them or Haven are probably All too right. clear favorites. What's the opposite of returning your entire team? Uh, losing it. That would be the Upper Darby, <laughs> upper, upper Darby Royals here that lost, I think, eight out of nine starters. Yeah, yeah. Um, Great year for them last yeah. year, though. No, yeah, then that's, again, like, the really... I mean, I guess it's not like they sold out. It just that's kind of how the, how it, how it went for them. Can't choose when people are born. Yeah, you know? exactly. And you know, they did a really good job of getting a lot of talented guys in there, and they, they played really well. And you know, they had an awesome win against Counter Rock South in the playoffs. Best pitching performance, oh, maybe yeah. in Delco High School history. Yeah. Eighteen strikeouts in a playoff game. Yeah, that was one of them. And that was like, I was there to cover that. The, the atmosphere, everything was awesome. So like, Chris Apito, goat. Yeah. So that's you know. Uh, that was definitely worth the maybe losing eight guys, but I mean, read those stats off for me right here. Oh man, <laughs> what we got? Yeah, zero seven five ERA in fifty five point two innings. Um, and that and he had the no hitter too. Yeah, against yeah. Garner Valley. Yeah, so that that speaks for itself. Um, they lost Chris Chung as well, who was a really good number two for them. Yeah, and, and he he plays club for Pitt right now. Yeah. Uh, and the day of our ring ceremony for the national championship, we're playing Pitt. So, Chris, if no you were listening way. to this and you ruin our special day, I'm not going to be happy and I'm not covering it. <laughs> Please, just wait until wait until Sunday because the ring yeah, ceremony is Saturday. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. wait until Sunday. Um, so, Drew Kessler, he was third on team innings. He's also gone. Uh, but his brother Jake is back. So, he was fourth on the team. Um, you'd have to imagine being the only returning starter, he's going to be the star of this team. Um, he's going to have to carry a lot of load here. Uh, offensively, uh, Drew Kessler, we mentioned the pitching. He was... Maybe their best hitter or one of them. He had 390 with a 972 OPS. Uh, Brian Fitzpatrick scratched that. Brian Fitzpatrick was probably their best hitter. He hit 406 with a 1062, 500 on base percentage. I'll, I'll take that <laughs> one, Jim, all day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Max Franzini's gone. Uh, he hit 294. Chris Cepito, uh, you know, hopped in there and hit uh, at some points. Hit 246, you know, doable. Um, but, yeah, these guys are going to be inexperienced. Yeah, no, this – I mean, to say this is a rebuilding year is a bit of an understatement, and that's not to say that they can't, you know, compete. But when you, when you break it down, you lost eight starters, and the JV team was 0-16 last year. Yeah. You know, they're, I, th- I think it's safe to say they're going to take a step back. But also, with that being said, they won a playoff game for the first time in 20, mm-hmm. 20 years, I think it was, maybe 15 years, uh, I think is what Tom Carey said. Um, they had some talent on the JV team. Jake Frederick uh, had a 10-13 OPS. 367 average. Albert McMichael and Seamus Mahoney both hit 300. Tommy Chung led the team in innings pitch, no so way. perhaps he's going to fill go. uh, Chris's That's spot awesome. here. But, you know, I think this is going to be like the, the down-to-earth season. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so, in a way to spin it, um, you know, they kind of had this year of like, I, I feel like that team, the Alfred Darby team, had been together for a good while. They kind of, you know, probably played a few years together. And then that senior year, they, you know, popped off, had a really good year. And now they're kind of back to that original step. But I think it helps having – and, you know, you the JV team went 0-16, but they got to kind of work with the varsity team, I would assume. And having guys like that, you know, can kind of set, like, a new standard for Upper Darby because, you know, they hadn't been a playoff team in a while. And now you kind of see someone – or see guys that came in the door and, like, got a win, made playoffs, like, you know, just kind of, you know, got some headlines. Yeah. And oh, it's a good standard to set and maybe something that these guys can strive to be. This year, it's going to be rough. But I think, you know, there's kind of a blueprint there now. Yeah, I think they just need to take last year and make sure, it, it like, they keep that culture, even mm-hmm. if the talent isn't yes. there this year. Understand, like, hey, we know what it's like to win now and have that yeah. instilled. Um, all right, let's move on to my alma mater, the defending Central League champions and district champs, uh, state semifinal runner-up, Strathaven Panthers. So last year... They made the 5A tournament. They were the three seed. They took down Phoenixville, uh, Alex Pack, Jim. Then uh, you were at these games, so they beat Ruston 11-5. to yep. Then they took down Upper Dublin 7-4 uh, to four to win their second district title in three years for Brian Feely. Won their first ever state playoff game uh, against Lower Dolphin. That was a 10-0 final. They kind of got that weight off the back because they, they had made the state playoffs, uh, I think, three years in a row, and they lost in the first round uh, the two years before. So they kind of got that monkey off the back, and they just kept playing loose after that. They took down Sealands Grove 
14 to three. That was a wildfire smoke game. I didn't even go to that game <laughs> uh, because yeah, I don't even think they should have played. But yeah. Greencastle Antrim was the state semi game. Ben and I were both there for that. Alex Pock masterpiece, a two nothing game. And as we all know, the heartbreaker in the state championship uh, to Shaler, they were down. Uh, excuse me, they were they were up eight to three. Shaler came back. They stormed back. It was a nine eight Shaler victory. But I mean, that was just a special run. Yeah, yeah, I think that was just an incredible run out of them. And you know, uh, we had them on earlier. I, I think you know they're really looking to build, and hopefully, they close it out this year. Yeah, uh, the elephant in the room here, Alex Pock. He he stayed in state college after yeah. that uh, that state championship game. <laughs> he successfully walked on at Penn State. Uh, very very happy for him. Congrats if you're listening. He had a zero point sixty two ERA in sixty eight point one innings pitched this year. That included several. Great postseason performances, just automatic. You know, I've never faced him. I don't know if I will because I play on the same summer team as him for Wayne. But, you know, I just, I'm curious what makes him so effective because, I mean, the velo's good. It's like mid 80s. You know, he throws uh, as a lefty from a, a bit of a, not like three quarter, but a little bit off to the side. Yeah. But, you know, it's just like, if I feel like he's one of those guys where if you watch him throw a bullpen, you don't immediately think like this guy's a star, right? Yeah. You have to watch him. Uh, watch him play but Sam Milligan's also gone uh, didn't really pitch much but was will, will be missed on offense he hit 402 last year 956 OPS uh, two homers that actually were in the same game one tied the game and one walked it off right. but the the silver lining here is that Luke D'Ancona is back uh, to anchor the rotation he's a Boston College commit outstanding sophomore year 241 ERA and 58 innings he hit uh, 91.1 miles an hour uh, at Ascent the other day. I saw that video circulating. So I think that him, uh, him, Van Wilder, Jake Friel, you know, there's a lot of really good D1 yeah. pitching in, in this, uh, this rotation, and he just keeps continuing to get better. Obviously, Alex Pock, great player at the plate as well. Hit 342, 1065 OPS. But outside of him, Sam, and Nick Corator, who had a solid year at third base, a lot of the offense is back. Jake McDonough, stud, Three homers, 330 average, 960 OPS. Uh, he'll be back in left field. He's a misericordia commit. Matty Kane behind the plate. He's a Rowan commit. Uh, you know, solid year at the plate, but I would say his his specialty is he's he's what we like to call a pitcher's catcher. Very good framing, very good keeping runners on, great arm, great blocking, uh, never takes a playoff there. So I think they'll, uh, you know, they'll they'll have that that nice, you know, D'Ancona Kane combo working for mm-hmm. them. Will Thompson back in the outfield. Ben Milligan. Came out of nowhere to hit 340 last year. Uh, keep the million legacy alive. And, uh, you know, Zane Malarkey, obviously the state championship, you know, will kind of leave a bad taste in the mouth. But he was a very effective pitcher, 170 ERA last year. Uh, I don't know what their plan is, whether he'll be that number two or kind of stay in that same role. Because Chris Coughlin, uh Rob Matai, uh, who actually, I was a camp counselor for him back, <laughs> back in the day when he was in like fourth grade. Uh, they also got Jake Kudrick down in JV, had a 166 ERA in 38 innings. Max Kotzen had a 329. So they got some arms that, listen, if if they can just have a good number two yeah. to go along with Luke at number one, I feel very good about their chances. Uh, this guy, Jack Schuster, if there was a JV Delco player of the year, he hit 559 Jeez. with a 1461 OPS and... Five triples, Jeez. which might be more than I've had in my entire baseball career. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that. No, not at all. I, I think because it, it's at Henderson and there's no fence uh, and yeah, right in yeah. and right uh, in center field. Okay, that helps um, a little bit. Yeah, but um, also had uh, Alex Silverian hit very well, really well for them. 322 was a freshman. Eli Price, 426 behind the plate. I think this is a team that, you know, has – they're, it's weird because like they're losing arguably their two best players, mm-hmm. but I still I, I like them and Marple as the the clear top two teams, and you can kind of debate yeah, you know which, which two uh, you feel comfortable with. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you there. I think they return enough that like they're going to be just as good. Um, yeah. There might be like a little. Bit, there's, there's obviously a question mark with like what's gonna what are you going to do uh, with number two, but. Like, like kind of what I said with Van, you have a guy in Luke who can beat anyone on any day, and that's very rare to have yep. in high school. All right, that'll do it for our Central League recap here. We're going to stay in the public schools. We're going to go to the Del Val League now. Some of these teams didn't have too much information available, so we're doing the best we can. Um, I'll just take these two here because we don't really yeah, have any stats. Yeah, so Academy Park and Penwood, they both went 2-10 and 10 in the conference last year. 
Couldn't find any stats. Couldn't even find a roster for them. Uh, so we'll just talk real quick. Uh, Academy Park, some of their big wins. They beat Penwood twice. They took that series mm-hmm. from them. Uh, they beat Collegium Charter 18-8. to They beat Renaissance Academy 12-9. to Those were some of their big wins on the year. Penwood took a game from Chester, a team that went 5-7 and seven to the conference. So that's got to be the highlight of their year to go along with uh, Academy Park, who was, you know, um, they, they took one of those three games there. But it seems like Chester... Chester's on Game Changer now. Chester has their rosters up. They have a new head coach, Jamal right. Martin. Uh, it, it seems like they're investing in the program a little bit. Yeah, Great yeah. field. Gorgeous field. I'll yeah, put that yeah, field up. With, that, that is a top five field in Delco, and it might be top three. Yeah, they take great care of it. It's an awesome field. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, they're oh, looking like they they were very competitive last year. Again, five and seven. I mean, Chester always has great athletes. They're just The baseball program just hasn't been great. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. football, basketball, like they put out dudes. Mm-hmm. It's just if they can turn some of that – you know, athleticism and talent into baseball success. Yeah, that's, I mean, like, guys. and that's, I think all it really takes is a little bit of investment into it. And I think, like, even, like, these little things of, like, game changer having stats mm-hmm. and stuff like that, like, that's showing at least, like, the first Show that step you care. of that. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, a nice field, like, mm-hmm. all this stuff. That, like, you know, there's people that care there, and I think there's, you know, potentially a program that could, like, turn around at some yeah. point. and they got some good talent coming back that you can tell us about yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, so they, uh... Where we got? So we got Eric Lewis had a really good uh, junior season. He hit 242. Uh, Brandon Cologne hit 281. Uh, Larry's Cardona hit 222, but he was playing as a as freshman. As a freshman, yeah. And they, and, um, they also had James Carr hit 286. He's coming back. Yeah. I'm sorry, he, he, they lost him. That, um, yeah, I was going to say. They, yeah, they yeah. lost him and Jose Cologne, who were two of their better hitters. Um, so... On the same top of Cardona, he led the team in pitching as a freshman. He had 19 innings, 250 ADRA. You know, again, like that's something you can build around, and, and I think that's going to be really solid for them. Um, I'll Eric, take a freshman with a 258 any yeah, day, you know? anytime. Uh, Eric Lewis, uh, also on the mound, uh, he was second on the team in 17.2 innings, 396 ERA. And it's like... 30 Ks in 17.2 yeah, innings is, is pretty solid. Yeah. Um, I will say that ending the season, it, it might sound kind of like loser talk, but a mm-hmm. six to one loss to Chichester for them is outstanding. Like a Chichester team that was twelve and zero, yeah, to go and on your last day of the season, keep that to be a five run game mm-hmm. is very encouraging, and yeah, it could be a little springboard, you know. Yeah, and I think that's so in six A in the Del Val, like so you play each team in the Del Val three times. Yeah. you win your six against. Academy Park and Penwood, which I think the way Chester is going, they should. And if you steal one or two from, they can make the playoffs. Like, that's like a, they, they were very close. Yeah, last like they, year. yeah, they were yeah. very close last year. Like a couple games, like they turn five and seven into seven and five, and they might be a playoff mm-hmm. team. And if they can, you know, if they can sneak one out against Interboro or yeah. something, who we're going to talk about right here. They have, a, they have a real chance. Um, so Interboro made the 5A tournament. They were the number five seed. Uh, hey, listen, they lost to Oxford by less than Marple did. They yeah. lost to Oxford 5-2 to two in the first round at home. They really didn't have, like, a true, like, signature win. Uh, they took all nine games against the teams below them in the standings. But, you know, they, they played some really good teams really tough in the Central League. They lost a uh, close game to Ridley, close game to Haverford. They lost 5-2 to Springfield, 8-5 to Strathaven. Like, they're they're showing that they're, they're not too far away. But if they want to, you know, it, it sounds kind of, it kind of sounds kind of dumb when you say it out loud, but, like, if they want to, you know, they, they got to take that series or at least one game from Chichester yeah. because Chichester just has a monopoly on this thing right now. Um, they lost Luke Dunleavy, who hit 298. Also lost Frank Sugar and uh, Julian Bulovis, who I think was their quarterback, actually. Huh. They covered football a little bit. But with that being said, on their team last year, the top four players in terms of plate appearances were all sophomores. Okay. So they're getting a lot of guys back. Evan Thomas hit 327 with a 962 OPS. Andrew Barbera hit 286. Um, Vinny Milbert, great name, hit 230, uh, and Shane West hit 300. So um, it's weird. They didn't have pitching stats. They had hitting stats. Interesting. They didn't have pitching stats. But, you know, if there's any consolation, it's that they went 9-3, and three, you know, were in a playoff game with four sophomores basically yeah. leading the way offensively. Yeah, got some guys back, and that's, I guess, you know, it's been – they so Interboro, I mean, they ran the 2010s in Del Val, mm. and since, I guess – Oh, I guess since 2019. I think, I think. since the Hankins got there, it's, yeah. it feels like it's kind of t- it's kind of turned around. But there's no Hankins left, as yeah. we'll talk about now with uh, the undefeated Chichester in the Del Val last year. Yeah, so 12-0 Del Val champions. Um, 
They made the 5A tournament as a two seed, had a bye week, and just lost a tight one to a really good Rustin team. I mean, we saw, we saw them. Oh, yeah, that, that's a that's a fine yeah. loss. Like, you know, the, the jokes are going to come out that, you know, that they only were in there because the Del Val. And mm-hmm. in some years, that, let's be honest, that's yeah, accurate between yeah. them and Interboro. Like, they're, they're a top seed because of their competition. But I mean, losing that game to Rustin against one of their their D one arms is yeah nothing to it's nothing to like you know call them frauds or like no. you know that's a, it's baseball you lose a two run game it happens yeah that was a Rustin team that gave you know we look at like maybe who the two top teams in the area last year were like they gave Strathaven a pretty good run um, and then they gave Bonner a really good oh run yeah for absolutely money. and so <laughs> this run differential <laughs> oh yeah so that's so last year um, they just dominated teams it was a 233 to 48 run differential um absurd that's absurd trying to do quick math they they won some they won they beat some good teams last year yeah they They beat they beat upper darby they beat carroll 13 to 4 they beat pencrest 14 to 4 i think most impressive of all might be losing only 6-5 at the haverford school yeah you know that's that's an elite team um lost to a good caravel team but they lost some guys yeah, there was a lot of, I mean, that was a very good team last year, but they, they did lose some legit guys. Um, one of the Hankins is, as, as we said, Jason Hankins. Uh, he went to Harford. He hit 448 with a 1158 OPS. Uh, they lost Stephen Kennard, who hit 419 with three home runs. DJ Anderson, Ian Marin, Aaron Jackson are all gone. They hit in the 330 to 350 range. So you're seeing like, a lot of really solid bats going. Um, and arms as well. Yeah, so that's uh, Aaron Jackson, 259 in 27 innings. DJ Anderson, a 239 in 26 innings. Um, again, they're top two arms. Uh, but so I guess their star coming back would be Troy Neff. Uh, he hit 455 with a 1368 OPS. That actually might be the highest OPS we've had so far. That will play, yeah. <laughs> that will definitely work. Um, and then had a 238 in 17 innings. So, you know, you got a guy who can do both for you. Uh, he's probably going to be carrying the team this yeah. year. Uh, Cole Stanford will throw a little bit more. There's just there's a lot of there's a lot of question marks. Uh, I mean, they they would still be my pick to win just based on their yeah. recent track yeah, record. I agree. But if there's any year for Interbro to kind of take that mm-hmm. that tide back, it could be this year. Yeah, and I think this is an interesting. I mean, we talked about like I expect Chester to be more competitive. I still think it's going to be. Who wins that best of three Absolutely. between Chichester and Interboro yeah. is probably going to take home the Del Val. Yeah. All right, well, that'll wrap up the Del Val here. Um, we're going to squeeze in our two uh, teams that are not in a Delco conference specifically. Uh, so we're going to start with the public. We got Sun Valley. They were 7-10 and 10 in a very tough Chessmont conference. They actually beat Rustin on opening day. They beat Springfield. Uh, they beat Oxford twice. That's a team that went on a run. Uh, they did beat Chichester. They beat Carroll as well. A lot of really big wins mm-hmm. last year. Uh, unfortunately, they lost Icon Jones. Great year last year at 410. He stole 28 bases, uh, and he's at Cal UPA right now. Uh, Justin Hickman's back. Had a great year. He hit 305. We got uh, two Penn State Brandywine commits, Will Noonan and uh, one of my favorite names, Ivano Romaniello <laughs> last year, who Very hit about Italian. 300. Uh, Pat Wiley, D2 commit, Chestnut Hill. Looks like he may have missed some time due to injury last year, but hopefully he's all healthy this year. The biggest loss, though, would be Josh Lillis. Yeah. Who was yeah, brilliant? I mean, stud. 121 ERA in 57 innings. Uh, slider made me look like I never played baseball <laughs> before. Uh, also lost Cole Carento, who had a 214 ERA. Bring back Paul Miazza, D2 Holy Family commit, uh, second on the team in innings. I think that this team is probably going to be kind of similar to last year. I yeah. guess. Yeah, I would agree. And that was uh, shout out my guy Dylan Everly, uh, assistant coach over there. Um, you know, he was kind of saying the same thing of like they bring back a lot of guys. You know, it's going to be tough to replace some of their top end dudes. Yeah, uh, I would say they lost star power, but they didn't lose that many yeah, people overall. Yeah. So would be the best way to put there's it. There's going to be some guys who are going to have to take the next step. I, I think they do have guys who are capable of doing that. All right. Well, we we really didn't talk too much about this team last year because a we didn't really know too much about them, and b just for the sake of time and, and resources. Mm-hmm. Uh, Delco Christian yeah. is they're in the bicentennial league which has a lot of – it's teams all over. It's teams yeah. in Philly. It's teams up towards Bristol. Um, you know, they uh, they they went 9-4, and four, though. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good year. Uh, Delco, Christ- Delco Christian is usually actually a pretty competitive team. Like New- Newtown Square, I think. Uh, I drive by them all the time. Yeah. It's like somewhere down in there. I think it's Newtown yeah. Square. Um, but, yeah, I mean, t- a typically competitive team. I think you can expect to see that again. Last year they made the 1A tournament as a four seed. I uh, lost 12-5 to eventual champion, Doc. I actually think I was at that 
I wasn't at that game, but like we had a Perky League game after. Oh, really? That's so, because I remember seeing uh, Delco Christian play Doc and what would have been, um, or would have been playoff. I was time. gonna say if it's summer ball, yeah. yeah. So, uh, a couple good wins, uh, they beat up on Church Farm 17 5 and beat up on Christian Academy even more 20 to 2. Um, a couple late 4 3 wins over Collegium and Bristol. And uh, we're going to bring back a couple guys. I think it's you know pretty interesting team. So Ryan Carroll's back. He led the team in hits as a junior, hit 273. Uh, Sam Dixon, he had a really good sophomore year, hitting 260. Caleb Jamison hit 326. He's a sophomore, uh, 888 OPS. Hopefully uh, jumps out to be a big year. He's going to be a guy for them on the bump too. So he's got uh, 29 innings pitched, uh, or uh, 29 innings pitched, uh, 362 ERA. Uh, so let's see, we got Bo Lyron. Great name. Uh, yeah, that's a really Great good name. one. Uh, he's back, fourth on the team and hits as a junior. Jackson Lewis hit 245. He's back for a senior year. Reed Darnell, uh, he had a 378 ERA in 16 innings. So. Uh, Seems like there's a lot back for them. Yeah, from the research I did, I, I really couldn't find too many players gone, which is good. Uh, very encouraging on, on a team that already went nine and four yeah. and and made uh, the district uh, district one one a tournament. That I think that they could be in for a good year. Um, definitely uh, the potential for you know a, a deep run, maybe challenge Doc this year. Uh, for the sake of of you know uh, safety, I won't reveal what. But I, I work at a school in this conference, mm -hmm. so that's kind of what. Made, made me learn a little bit more about like the, the bicentennial yeah, yeah. league and kind of understand what uh you know it's about and i think it's cool that you know we're, we're going to be able to focus a little more on this school this year i think honestly it was for the sake of we just didn't really know much about the program they yeah, weren't yeah. playing any other teams that we that we cover so you know us last year not having really the time we, we just didn't have the the resources to be able to cover them the way we wanted but uh looking forward to it this year and i think that you know i won't say any guarantees but i think it's a good shot that they make the district tournament again and yeah, it seems like they're uh, only getting older right? I, I think they should have a really good shot at that and yeah i mean didn't cover them a ton actually really at all last year but we were kind of piecing things together i think we'll yeah be a little more i mean for the it. first month it was just me so yeah, I, yeah, you didn't really yeah. Have, yeah but um all right now that we are in the private school scene we are going to go to the pcl which is i would say honestly it's kind of my favorite league just because i just love the history of it you know like it feels it just feels big you know the pcl has been around forever uh, it's had so many great rivalries. There's Delco teams. There's Philly teams. It, it's so cool to me. Uh, I don't really have. I didn't really have much experience playing them. I only played Bonner as a senior in high school, but learning more about it. And they're really the only team with an actual playoff like tournament, which I've been trying to push on the Central League and even the Interac forever. But uh, we'll start with Archbishop Carroll. They uh, they had a, a, a bit of a tough season by their lofty standards. They're four and eight last year. They did make the PCL tournament as the ten seed out of ten. They lost on the road to the next team. We'll talk about O'Hara seven to one. Uh, they had some some interesting games throughout the year. So they beat O'Hara eleven to ten in the regular season. They played an eighteen to ten game against uh, Bonner, which they ended up losing. But I would say their best win of the year honestly came outside the PCL because they beat Penn Charter. 7-5, yeah, which is a very, very good team. They lost their best hitter, Jack Bateman, to Holy Cross. Uh, he was a 370 hitter, 975 OPS. Uh, he also led the team in innings pitched, even though I don't really think pitching was his main specialty because uh, I think James Brown got hurt, which is kind of pushed him into more of that role. But they lost James Brown. They lost Connor Keith. But it, I don't think it's a, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's too much to say that Gavin Ray is the story of this season because yeah. they brought in the East Carolina commit who transferred from Pencrest. He's got the stuff and the talent to be the best pitcher in Delco. I, I don't think that's a stretch. He's got a fastball that's up to 94. Had some issues with walk, uh, walks last year at Pencrest. But if he's able to be around that zone more and give them a great start you know, every other day, then this team could be a, a PCL sleeper. Yeah, I think they're going to kind of go as he goes. Yeah, and I think that, you know, it's not really, I mean, it is putting a little pressure on him, you no, know, but, but like, Well, that's part it's of being true. an ace, though. Yeah, you want that, and you yeah, want that pressure, right? Uh, they lost Don Vanini. He was third on the hits along with James Brown. Uh, Jaden Mitchell graduated, hit 292. He's at Penn State Brandywine now. Dylan Gallagher uh, is a Drew University commit. He will be back. Jalen Tidwell. More conference right there. 
What was that Landmark? I yep, didn't know that. that Landmark Conference. There we go. Uh, Jalen Tidwell got 50 at bats his sophomore year. He'll probably be back at the hot corner. James Wright is a captain on this team. Uh, he had a good year hitting 260. Like we said, pretty young team, potential ace. Uh, their JV stats were not available, so we don't really have too much to help us out there. But I think if Gavin pitches the way that you know he's shown he can pitch, then this is a team that let's just say they won't be four and eight in the PCL. Yeah, I think yeah, that's I you know we don't know how far they'll go, but I, I don't think they'll be four and eight. Mm -hmm. All right, you got the team that knocked Carroll out of the dance last year. So let's talk yeah. about O'Hara. All right, we got another, I guess, kind of Springfield, kind of Marple resident school. I think I it's know. Springfield. Yeah, I, think I think it's, it's technically, technically Springfield. Springfield. Yeah. So, yeah, perfect. I got both of them. Um, so Cardinal O'Hara went 5-7 and seven last year. Uh, as you said, knocked out Carroll 7-1. They, they were the seventh seed. Um, they went and faced LaSalle. Uh, they were the number two seed, lost 6 nothing. That's kind of where the season ended for them. Um, but they had a couple, in addition to Carroll, they beat LaSalle on opening day. Uh, they beat Springfield in a little crosstown rivalry and beat St. Joe's Prep, who I feel like you always kind of want to beat St. Joe's Prep. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that game um, against LaSalle on opening day, so a uh, name drop, but Kendall, my club team, Justin Machida, went to LaSalle. He was a sophomore last year, and he comes into practice pissed off. I'm like, what's the matter? It's like, we just <laughs> lost to O'Hara on opening day. Like He was like, he's like that can't happen, and I'm, and I'm just sitting there <laughs> just laughing. Sitting there laughing. I, I'm just like, yeah, well, you know, that's good for Delco. So yeah, Sorry, yeah, Cheats. Um, good for the brand. Yeah, no, it, it, and it kind of set the tone because I believe they were 2-10 and 10 the year before. Mm -hmm. So to be able to, to win against that LaSalle, team on opening day had to be like great for the great oh, for the yeah. locker room you know i 100 percent agree yeah. um unfortunately for them they lose their ace pat ahern uh he went to albright he was incredible last year 187 48.2 innings i mean generally one of the best pitchers in the county um but they got capital university commit noah mcmullen back um he had some ups and downs but had a went six what six and two thirds shutout innings uh, against saint joe's prep in that one nothing game, um, so he's going to be a guy for them. Uh, they got another, and they got another college commit going to Mercy. So he, Kevin King, uh, he's going to be back. He only threw ten innings, but he's going to have to have a bigger year this year. Yeah. Um, so you know, pitching staff that's going to bring back some guys. Christian Cervalero was third on the team in innings pitched. Uh, he'll also be back. So we're going to get a decent amount of the offense back as well. Um, unfortunately, you lose kind of your main guy in Paul Daly. Uh, he went to Chestnut Hill. He hit 370 with a 1144 1, 1, OPS. Um, that's going to hurt. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's it's one of those teams where a lot of the court's back, but it's it's a similar strap in a sense where like you lost your guy on the mound and you lost your guy in the box, yeah. right? And I think that you know they're going to have to have guys. Um, that you know last year were good that are going to have to be you know to, to quote Moneyball you got to recreate them in the mm -hmm. aggregate right like if you want to re you know replace Paul Daly you know you can't do it right yeah. but we can you know make up for him in the aggregate so they got guys like Brendan Till a uh, great player he hit 310 last year Kevin McGuire I uh, used to play uh, with his older brother Colin Same three oh no, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah three, 315 here. average um Tim Ramirez missed a lot of time with injuries um but he hit 285 and you know I don't know I, I think that this uh the, the core is still there. Yeah, hundred percent. And so a couple other guys added that. Uh, Jimmy Kopic hit two eighty three. He'll be back. Noah McMullen, who we mentioned on the mound, um, he's going to have a bigger role on the mound. He's probably going to have a bigger role at the plate. Uh, he hit two seventy. And then we got a freshman here, Nate Everett. He uh, hit two fifty five. So you know, another young guy who can you know, step up for them. And then. Also in the JV, um, is this like an Italian deli right here? These names. Oh my, oh my god. Goodness, yeah. So we got Jay Campuzano uh, at 343 with 867. Daniel Coppa. Coppa. Coppa Yeah, Capricola. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he hit 280 with a 1034. So a little bit of that like little Kyle Schwarber thing we were talking about. Yep. Um, and then Anthony Galley hit 300. So and had a 266 ERA and 21 in 26.1 innings pitched. Um, so. Um, a lot of solid Italians coming back. And yeah. Slightly less hey, Italian. I, I, listen, uh, I'm on their side now. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, slightly less Italian, Colin McAnally. McAnally? McAnally? Um, yeah. All right. Slightly less Italian, Colin McNally had a 3.96 and 17.2 innings. Um, so, you know, another guy who, you know, maybe can, I guess, you know, we said recreate Pat Ahern, Ahern in the yeah. uh, aggregate. Yeah, and you got to just hope that, you know, the culture is continuing to build, right? Mm -hmm. You go 2-10, and ten, then you go to 5-7. and seven. You got to hope that, you know, you're on the right track, even if you lose some of your uh, some of your star players. So um, keep an eye on them. But, I mean, there's a very clear 
best team in uh, in the PCL from Delco, and that's yep. Bonner. You know, we talked to those guys on the show. Uh, this is an exciting roster. So last year, made the PCL tournament as a number three seed. They lost to Roman Catholic at home, which I know stung, especially mm-hmm. with how many people were there. They uh, they won the District 12 championship over Franklin Town Charter, but their their playoff run really got started in the state tournament when they won a thrilling uh, 7-4 game over Ruston that Ben was at. Yep. They then took down the two-time defending state champion Bethel Park in the state quarterfinals. They eventually lost to that same Shaler team in the semis by a 9-3 final. Uh, this is a team that has so many dudes back. It almost makes you forget about the fact that they lost a first-round draft pick, yep. Kevin McGonigal, uh, who's drafted by the Tigers, who, I mean, this OPS doesn't even look real when you look at it. He hit 515 with a 17-10 OPS. <laughs> I think we had said the highest that we saw before that was 13-something. Like yeah. yeah. Uh, so 17-10 OPS with six bombs. You know, there's we, we've said plenty about Kevin on this show before that you don't need to hear uh, any more about what he meant to this team both on and off the field. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure outside of him and Brian Henry, they brought, they're running it back for real after yeah, yeah. three straight uh, semifinal appearances in the state tournament that have all been losses. I think this could be the year they get over the hump. So they got Irv Fisher's back, speedy center fielder, hit 424 with an 1101 OPS last year. He also stole 15 bags. Uh, speaking of Wingate commits, Quinn Bryan behind the plate, he hit 270 last year. He's also a Wingate guy. Uh, Rider commit Austin Cannon had a big year last year. He had 372, 984 OPS. Uh, he, he had two homers, one that I think still might be going against oh, Shaler. Dude, that ball that was ball launched. Was crushed. Uh, Butler commit Harry Carr's back. He will take over shortstop with Kevin McGonigal gone. Uh, he had 342 last year. We'll talk about him more as a pitcher in a sec. Uh, Jackson Kehoe, Radford commit. He's back at the hot corner. Uh, solid year for him, hitting 284 at the top of the order. Keep going around the infield. CJ Nacella, Wilmington University commit. Hit 360 last year. He had a team high 21 stolen bases. But um, Brian Henry uh, graduated. He's at Misery Cordy now. He had a 265 ERA, second on the team in innings. What did they do to replace him? They brought in Corey Sheridan, a transfer from <laughs> Sleazyanum. Uh, he's an Aston guy. He obviously doesn't have any stats to talk about in the PCL, but he will be heading to NC State. Now they got him. They got Johnny Ortega. Great sophomore year with a 3-6 ERA. And that really allows Harry Carr and Jackson Keogh to kind of go to the bullpen now and uh, and, and kind of give them a little bit, you know, of, of more of a... I would, I would just say that they can kind of save those innings for a little bit, keep them more fresh, because now they have Rocco Calise, who's committed mm-hmm. to Eckerd, uh, D2 school in Florida. But, you know, to be able to have a guy like Harry Carr, who had a 2 ERA in 48 innings, and Jackson Kehoe, they, those were like two of your main guys last year. Now they don't even have to be pitchers yeah. if you don't if you don't necessarily want them to be. Yeah, it's I I think like when you have two ways, especially with Harry and Jackson, they seem to be like more towards obviously more towards the offensive side of things. So like I don't know that helps. Like you kind of get worn down when you're hitting yeah. pitching, like just doing everything every day. Like you know these guys are great players, but they're human. Like, yeah, and, and gets they'll be out. they're much more needed. At short and third than they yeah, are on the mound. Um, they will also have Matt Shade. He's an Eastern commit. You got some young guys like Ryan Friel and Nick Fertangeli to help out when needed. But overall, if everyone, this is going to be one of those teams where, you know, there's going to be some really good players on the bench. Mm-hmm. And as long as they accept their role, and, you know, I'm sure that the Bonner coaches will, you know, make sure that they have that uh, solidified that this team has state championship ceiling. Yeah, 100%. I agree. That's their uh, – last year they were one of the best teams in the state in 5A. I, I think it's the same thing again. Is it crazy that I think they, they might have gotten better? Like, they lost Kevin McGonigal, but, like, uh, from, yeah, from like, 1 to 25 or however big the roster is, 1 yeah, to 20. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy to think yeah. about that. Yeah, it's an interesting argument. Like, they, they added, I feel like they lost you know, a top end guy and added depth. And sometimes yeah. that's like what a team And needs they almost, to. I mean, they added a top end guy too, just pitching yeah, wise. Yeah, you know? that's a good so, point. Yeah. Uh, I, I, only time will tell, I guess. Yeah. Um, Be a fun right. season. For yeah, on, on JV, they got some guys. Uh, Michael Coleman got called up, I think, towards the end of the year. 1036 OPS. Sergio Hernandez was also called up. Uh, he had a 325 average. Uh, Jake Graziani, who I'm imagining is probably Chris's brother or cousin, yeah, shout yeah. out Elizabeth Town, uh, had a good, good year, 165 ERA. Um, but you know, overall, I think that this team is going to rely on a lot of the guys that are back, and um, I'm so excited. I, I know they're playing in Florida, to, so we get to see them early on in the year. Yeah, I'll be excited to see how that goes for yeah. them. Uh, well, the PCL defending champ is Father Judge. Uh, Bonner won it in 2022, so we'll see if uh, if Bonner can get back on top of the throne this year. 
All right, let's move on to, I think the PCL might be my favorite conference, but I think the Interact might have the best talent, yeah. you know, from top to bottom uh, in agree. terms of, you know, the the highest potential. Uh, so you're going to tell us about the Episcopal Churchmen right now. Yeah, so we'll kick it off with Episcopal. Uh, they were 4-6 and six in the Interact last year, uh, made the P-A-I-S-A-A. Uh, for That's future reference, they do call it the PESA. The PESA. It, it's, li- right. it's, it's easier. That's a lot all six easier. That's a lo- I was about to say, that's a lot of letters. The PESA. Yeah. All right, they made the PESA tournament yep. as the number 7 seed out of 12, took down Mercersburg 8 nothing before eventually falling to, uh, well, the eventual state champions, Malvern Prep, in the state quarterfinals. Uh, a couple big wins, uh, beat Malvern in the regular season, 5-2, beat Penn Charter, 5-1, beat Carroll, 13-1. So it was a pretty good team. Uh, good they resume. Return a lot. So they, they lose Derek Boyd-Voles. Um, he transferred to the Hill School for a grad year and will be going to Holy Cross next year. Can you imagine if – sorry to cut you off, but yeah. they, they play in the same playoffs, the Hill School and Episcopal. The Hill School's in the Do PESA they? too because oh. the PESA – the reason the PESA exists is because you're allowed to have – like. Post grads, huh. you're allowed to have guys that are over the age of 18. Okay, so the Hill School was in the bracket last year. They didn't play each other, but can you imagine a, a high school revenge game like Jeez. Derek pitching against? Like you see that in college, you see it obviously yeah. mostly in the pros, but like a, a high school revenge game would go so unbelievably hard. I don't even know that what to say. Would like, be, I wonder, like so dramatic. Would he be allowed? Like, to, I guess he'd be allowed to pitch against. Yeah. Them, oh yeah. Right? Why yeah, not? not? Okay. Yeah. Wow. I mean, one eighty seven oh. ERA in thirty three innings. He was great in that Mercersburg yeah, game, yeah. but they still they have plenty of talent back. Oh, hundred percent. So they got uh, Logan Corral. He's a Lehigh commit, uh, sophomore. Uh, led the team in innings, so like, really had a solid year, especially for a yeah. sophomore. In the oh, interact. great sophomore season. Um, three three eight ERA, forty one innings pitched. He'll probably be their top guy. Uh, Michael Cadden, who I think I saw pitched in the game I went to through very well. Um, he was third on the team in innings pitched, twenty two. Had a three one three ERA. Um, I, I think you can expect to see a lot of him again. Him. And then they got a really interesting, uh, I guess, sophomore now, uh, Timmy Dennis. So PBR's got this guy listed at 6'8", 185. That's which absurd. Is massive. Yeah. Um, Perfect game had him at 6'5". Either way, he's large. It's 6'5". No, no, I'm saying PBR had him at 6'8". Perfect uh, game had him at 6'5". Yeah, I have two. no idea. Either way... That does not That's sound like a, a fun at bat. Yeah. Hey, listen, freshman with a 197 ERA mm. in 21 innings is is outstanding. Yeah, that's that's pretty legit. Uh, that's going to be uh, – he's probably being there as, like, tallest guy in Delco this year. Oh, it's got to be. I, I don't yeah. think anybody else is, is, <laughs> is even close to that. That's – oh, going to have to – The 185 I, is nuts, yeah, though. Dude, that's skinny. But uh, that is what it is. You're a freshman. You, yeah. It's like 14. you got time yeah, to fill dude. out. Yeah. Um. A lot of the same faces offensively. Yeah, though. yeah. That's so offensively, uh Derek Boy Vols Boy Vols obviously uh, is gone. He had a good year at three twenty four, but a lot of guys come back. So well actually also they lost out oh, never run. Um so Derek Boy Vols is a guy they lost. I uh, had a good year hitting three twenty four. Uh Zach Latour, T J Cannon or T J Cadden are also gone. Uh Ryan Tansky's now at Gettysburg and Brad Johnson are at Swarthmore. <laughs> Some centennial love right there. Yeah, yeah. No but we still got multiple D1 guys oh, left yeah. on this roster. Um, so Lafayette commit Alex Barris. Uh, he played for Wayne this yes, summer, had a good year. Uh, he hit 329 with a 919. He'll be back. Cornell commit Tyler Bolio. I want to say Bolio. Bolio. Is what I'm going to guess. Bolio returns <laughs> after a season where he hit 338 and 937. Yeah, he'll, be at, he'll be at Cornell. Joining Mark Quattrani next Love year. Love that. A little uh, interact action at yep. Cornell. Um, we got brother of, uh, sorry, brother of uh, guests on the show, Jake Verbitsky. He's out here. Um, he had a good sophomore season. He had 278. And I mean, we heard a lot about, you know, what Kyle thought of, like, his growth in the offseason. Listen, you take Johnny Gonzalez's yard, you have mm-hmm. my respect because oh, yeah, that dude yeah. throws, like, 14 different pitches and, and usually doesn't leave him over the plate. Yeah, 100%. So I, I'm excited to see what he brings this year. And then Jack Hurdy, he's a Maryland commit. Not the best statistical season, hit around 200, but, like, you know, you're, you're not going to commit to Maryland if you suck. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. No, he's got talent. Listen, good players have bad years. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, it'll be a know? down year. We can expect a bounce back out yeah. of him. And also, you know, the numbers don't tell the whole story. Maybe there was someone they kind of pitched around, someone had bad luck. You know, for all we know, uh, that was the case. But, you know, uh, uh, a lot, you know, obviously some faces gone, but a lot of that core is, yeah. uh, is still there. 
Yeah, and that's yeah, he's, I feel like always a team with a lot of talent, and it's going to be a question of whether they can really just like put it together and compete with you know the Haverford School of Malvern yeah. and all those teams. The, the number one field in Delco, though. Yeah, I'll beautiful. Uh, anytime I beautiful. drive by, that field is spectacular. Yep. All right, our last team that we have to talk about here uh, also have come on the show already. It's the Haverford School. So last year they were five and five. They made the Pesa tournament as the number three seed after a very slow start. They started zero and four in the interact and were able to turn it around. Uh, because they had a big walk-off hit from Sean Doherty over EA in that in that game, they uh, they end up losing to Penn Charter in the tournament after getting a bye week. But as you know, as we mentioned in that interview, that that Episcopal win kind of turned the season around because they ended up they beat Malvern ten to seven. They obviously they beat Strathaven as well seven uh, five. They beat Carroll uh, Newman Gretti, great PCL team. They beat them. Uh, it's going to be hard to replace Mark Quattrani. I mean, yeah. I think he hit yeah, five seventy last year. His OPS, see, the thing is, Haverford doesn't have their stats public, but I would imagine his OPS had to be close to McGonagall range, yeah. maybe not 1,700. Uh, an interesting tidbit, uh, I believe this is from Matt Smith, Delco Times. He was the first ever recipient of the Interact MVP on a non-championship team, huh. which is crazy because the Interact's been All around right. forever. Yeah, you know? wow, that's actually... Yeah. Huh. Uh, Cole Donnelly's gone as well. He's at Lehigh now. Uh, they also lost Ryan Getz and Sean Doherty, who, gra- who graduated. They were big parts of the order. Offensively, a lot of new faces coming, but Connor Scanlon will be back at shortstop. Uh, he was their leadoff hitter last year, and I'd imagine he'll stay in that spot. Uh, Jaden Rivera is a guy that the Haverford guys, uh, you know, name dropped to us. They said that they're excited to see him this year. Pat White is Ian White's cousin, okay. um, so another young guy that that got hot last year that they want to see um, stay for the whole year. Noah Trexler as well, but you know they're they're talking about how. Um, how good the rotation is going to be. They lost Jack Campbell, who pitched a gem in the state championship game over Malvern Prep in 2022, but and he, he's now at Norwich. But overall, the you know it's hard not to be excited when the top three in the rotation are back oh, for yeah. Haverford. Ian White Jr. is committed to East Carolina. Uh, Kevin Reeve is committed to Army, and Fred Jordan is still kind of weighing his options. But those guys have been their, you know, their, their mm-hmm. top three in the rotation for a while now. And, you know, it, pretty much the notes I have here are young bats, veteran arms. Yeah, uh, it's going to be, I mean, I, don't know, I think it's a really good thing to have. And again, I think, I forget, I think we talked about with Garnet, where like when you have one side of the, you know, one side of this game, I guess, as good as, you know, a team like Haverford has, the, you know, it's going to give the young guys a little bit of chance. Like, you're going to have, you know, you're going to be in games. You're not going to have to, like, do too much. And I think it's going to help because it take a little bit of pressure off those yeah. younger guys. Another guy they mentioned from JV, Brenner Green, hit uh, 444 with wow. a 1420 OPS and two homers last year on JV. Uh, Kevin Lee hit 381 and also had a 276 ERA. Ethan Farrington on JV hit 404. Drew Pennywill, I think there was a kid named Joe with the same last name that graduated. Um, 326 average. Connor Haney. Excuse me, at a 1.81 average in 31 innings. You know, I, I think this team has a very good argument to potentially be the most well rounded team in Delco. Uh, yeah. We'll talk a little bit about our power rankings here, but uh, very excited to see what they bring to the table here. Uh, we have a little bit about Malvern Prep here. I know they're not Delco. We can kind of go through this one quickly together yeah, just to talk yeah. about them. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's, it's enough Delco and it's enough talent that it's worth talking about. Mm. So they won the state championship last year, they took down, um, Perky Yeoman School, 6-4 to four in the final. They beat Episcopal and Penn Charter, so they kind of proved that they were the best team in the Interac. According to their, their Twitter bio, since so in this decade, yeah. they won state titles in 2014, 15, 17, 18, 19, 21, and 23. That's seven Jeez. Of, of that time frame. <laughs> Haverford won in 22. I don't know who won in... 20. I think Haverford won in 16. Yeah, no, well. you're right. You're right. And yeah. I think they won in 13 as well. Um, they got. They do have some innings to replace. So Cam Markham is gone. Charlie O'Shell is also gone. He now plays for UVA. They also lost Ryan Davis, who headed to Lehigh. But you know, as they say at Malvern, they don't rebuild; they reload, right? Tay Davis is back. He is the son of the Phillies broadcaster and uh, former number two overall pick Ben Davis. Had a three seven nine ERA, which was solid, but he's more of a hitter than Definitely a pitcher. A hitter, yeah. uh, we'll talk about in a little bit. DJ Peterson's back. He was fourth on the team in innings with twenty three. Believe it or not, there's another O'Shell brother that's still here. Uh, so Fran's at Duke, Charlie's at UVA. Will is going to be a junior. He's also committed to Duke. Won't really cross paths with uh, with Fran there, but had a, had a nice three three ERA. And if you're Freddie Hilliard, you got to just love that family. Oh my God, yeah, it's just 
giving them three D one arms. Like, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, Tim Dickinson's also gone. He's now at St. Joe's. He had a good year playing the Delco League. Uh, he had a three twenty six average. Trey Tiffin is gone. He's already actually getting time at, at Elon. Uh, I, th- I, th- I think yeah, he's he batting run. fifth. Yeah, he uh, him and Connor Offshack are going back to back in that order, which is which is wow. got to be cool for the Malvern community yeah, that's really to cool. see. Uh, Trey had a big year last year. He had four home runs. Jackson Simcoe is gone. He's at Shenandoah as well. Actually, uh, he had two ninety eight last year. They they definitely lost some guys, man. Jack Stead's at NJIT. Drew Kennedy's at Tampa. Matt Tassaris is at Lehigh. Like, they, but when you look at what they have coming back, it's even more impressive. Um, Andrew Pelicciato was a sophomore last year, but he had 394 and uh, 1169 OPS. I think he's going to be a D1 football player eventually. I've seen him get a okay. lot of offers. Yeah. Brady Abate was a freshman last year who hit 340 uh, and a 997 OPS. Now, Brady, I'm going to need that over 1,000 last year because according to uh, Perfect Game, you're a Newtown Square native. So we're claiming you as Delco, uh, if, that's, if that is true, absolutely. Uh, Mason Clark, Boston College recruit, and Grant Kennedy, who I think tore his ACL last year, but he's a Richmond commit, so he'll okay. be back this yeah. year. But it's just like it's absurd how every year this yeah, team they is just, just had dudes. Yeah. And like, it's... read me some of these JV stats right here. Oh, well, let's see. So we got. Oh, and there goes my entire laptop. <laughs> I don't know why this thing's not scrolling. I must have something on here. Yeah. Um, all right. So we got Jackson Melconian hit 383 with a 1017 OPS. Chase Ecker, 387 with a 1074. Owen Hammond, 484 casual with a 1262. Chase Ecker, oh wait, you have Chase Ecker twice. Oh, my bad. Um, Let's take that off. Yeah. Uh, Chase McMahon, uh, 099 ERA and 28 innings pitch. What if he's related to Chris, Mc- Chris McMahon? No. Oh, Bill Rustin pitcher went in the second yeah, round yeah, out yeah. of Miami. Yeah, maybe. Another Italian name here, Ryan Capobianco, 162 in 26 innings. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's a stretch to say Malvern will be at the top of that yeah, conference, I mean, they always you know, are. whether it's uh, in first place or not. You know, obviously they're going to have their uh, their their reload coming yeah. in. And uh, I want to get out to that game. I, I don't know if it's at Strathaven or Malvern. I live in Malvern, so I hope it's in Malvern so I can, be helpful. So I can get out there. But uh, that is our Interact recap here. And now we have really come to the main event of the program here. It is time for the first ever Delco Baseball Now starting nine Let's power go. rankings. I'm excited. Uh, this won't take too long to run through, but we're just going to start. I think we start batting leadoff uh, just because, you know, I want to start one to nine. I was going to go nine to one. Well, in a batting order, do you read it nine to one? No, but also, like, these are rankings. I so. guess, yeah. <laughs> all right, fine. Start. Fine, fine, fine. We can start with, no- we can start with number nine. Uh, all right, so number nine here. We are going to go with Ridley. Uh, you know, we, they lost a couple arms, but they got a lot of that core back. They got a lot of exciting JV arms back. And I think that, you know, they have kind of shown over the last few years that the program just keeps consistently mm-hmm. going up. Yeah, and, uh, and, you know, a playoff appearance last year, I think they're going to have another solid year, and I'm, I'm good with them at nine. What do yeah. you got? What uh, do you got? There's a, also got a really good coach in the building. Yep. I think Tom yep. Carey did a great job with Upper Darby. I think he's going to yep. do a really good job with Ridley. Uh, at eight, another Central League team, we got Garnet Valley. Um I just I think that offense is unbelievable, and it's, it's going to definitely power them this year. Yeah, and, and sometimes you know I'll take the team that's a lead in one thing and questionable in other mm-hmm. than I suppose the one that's it's average in both. Yeah. Right. So not saying that about Ridley, just just in general, uh, I think that the star power for Garner Valley can carry, and if some of those arms are able to produce, then it's, it's a scary yeah. team. All right, number seven, we are going with Harriton. As we mentioned earlier on the show, they got two great pitchers back. They got a lot of scary bats in the lineup, both young and experienced. I think it's a team that, you know, learned a little bit in the playoffs last year about what it takes to be successful. And uh, I think they're ready to rebound. You know, the Marple guys listed them and, and Garnet Valley as two teams uh, that, they, that they're that they looking out for in the Central League this year. And and I like Harrington at seven. Yeah, I could see them as a climber in, this, mm-hmm. in these rankings too. Um, so coming at six, a little crosstown rival, which would make for some really good games. Lower Marion. Um, I think a lot of this is the Van Wilner, Wilner effect. Uh, he's just an incredible pitcher. Like we said, put him up against anyone any day. You probably have a shot. Um, so, and, you know, I think we're kind of banking on him uh, making up for some of the question marks they have. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, one great pitcher can do can do wonders. Uh, it might not, necessar- not necessarily lead to a long playoff run, but in terms of team, like mm-hmm. in, in a power ranking perspective, absolutely. 
All right, in the number five saw, we got our first private school. We got the Episcopal Academy. We just got done talking about them. We like the fact that Logan Krell's back. They got Timmy Dennis. They got a lot of their their core of, uh, of hitters back. I think that, you know, it, it's – it's weird because we're going to kind of have to balance, you know, teams record versus the talent that they're playing. Right. And the, and the competition level, you know, those out of conference games that you schedule. Right. But I like Episcopal at five. I think that they, you know, have enough talent uh, that they deserve to be up there, even if the results last year weren't necessarily what they wanted. I think that they deserve to be top five. Yeah, I agree. Uh, coming at four, I think we have one of the two main contenders for the Central League. Um, Marple Newtown. So they bring back, a, I mean, pretty much their entire roster. It, it's uh, it's just going to be a year where they're they're going for it all, I think. And, and they're going to be really fun to watch. Uh, that Central League title battle between them and Haven is going to be must-watch. Um, just a really exciting team. And, one, and, again, one that we might see higher up on the rankings. Yeah, talent, leadership chemistry they, they got it all uh we're really excited to watch them well as foreshadowed we're gonna go Strathaven at number three here the the defending uh 5a state champ runner-ups they uh they lost alex pock and sam milligan but we still believe that they have a lot of guys coming back that could help contribute to make up for the losses in them listen they, they won the conference by four games last year uh is is pock and our pock and milligan worth that you know that gap i don't know until we see marple show on the field that they're better than mm -hmm. strathaven it's kind of hard to put them over strathaven right now uh, i very much believe marple has the potential to jump them i promise once the season goes on you know we're not gonna be biased we got two people to cancel yeah. each other out so uh ben can overrule me at some point but i i think that strathaven deserves the respect after what they did last year. Yeah, that's I, I really in my mind, like if you said, who's going to win the Central League, I, it's a coin flip between the two of them. But just I, I think on like what they did last year and what they bought back, they, they, they are deserving of the, of the higher ranking to start the year. That could mm -hmm. in the first week switch if, you know, they look eh, and Marple kills people, uh, you know, could go the other way too. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I'm, I'm happy with them at three. All right, number two. So number two, we got the Haverford School. Um, and, you know, we kind of just talked about them, yeah, so we don't have yeah. to go too in depth. <laughs> kind of just yeah. said what we just said what we had to say about them. Uh, but again, like just incredible talent there. The pitching staff is one to really fear. Um, Three headed monster. Yeah, Fred Jordan, the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I think I'm excited to watch them play. You know, I got a lot of friends in the in the organization there. Mm -hmm. I think that they have a lot of talent uh, ready to go, and you know, the experience of a lot of that core was on the state championship team. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's they're going to be a team that. Again, kind of the same thing of like Episcopal where they're playing out of conference and everything. Um, but uh, they're always as good as anyone in the county. All right. Well, the number one team in Delaware County heading into the 2024 season, we are going with the Monsignor Bonner Friars. I mean, they have 10 seniors committed to play college baseball. They got juniors going to NC State. They, they have uh, one of the most well-rounded high school baseball rosters I've ever seen. Uh, I think their pitching goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Haverford School, and I think their lineup uh, has a lot more experience and, and has shown a lot that this is, uh, this is a special year coming for them. And uh, I feel very, very comfortable. I think that if we're splitting it up into tiers, I think Bonner and the Haverford School are in that top tier. I think Strathaven and Marple and maybe Episcopal are in that middle tier. Yeah. And then after that, you know, I think that's when it gets a little more interesting. But I feel very good about Bonner here. I'm so excited to watch them. And, uh, you know, I, I think we got that one right. Yeah. No, I, I don't say I'm, I'm happy with the whole list. But Bonner at the top, definitely. I think they're it just, you know, and all we can really do now is like on paper and historically. But with that, like. There, I, I really do feel comfortable saying they're the best team in Delco right now. Yeah, I mean, like you know, people can whine all they want. I'm, no matter what, people are going to be upset, and I get it. But you know, it, and you know, it, wait to get upset until the games actually happen. Yeah. If if your team deserves to be on there after playing games and we don't have you, that's that's fine. But for right now, this is all on paper. Uh, we definitely had Carroll in consideration with the addition of Gavin Ray. You know, very young team. We kind of want to see them prove it first. Chichester was tough to leave off after mm -hmm. the season they had last year. But again, it's you're losing your top two pitchers and a lot of bats. You know, it, yeah. it's it, they're they're both like prove it teams. They're both very very potentially going to be on here soon. Yeah, but I, I think there's a have. lot there's a lot of good teams that have you know, a shot of you know, a good cu first couple of weeks. Yeah. Be, I mean, this is nowhere near permanent. This is just no, kind of it's fluid. From Very we, fluid situation. Yeah, from yeah. what we got from Game Changer and Max Preps and just a bunch of different Yeah, and we're stuff, also but. idiots, too. Yeah, I think that's yeah, very that's important. A, yeah, no, we are very dumb people. We are, that's like a full full disclosure. Yeah. We should have mentioned, <laughs> mentioned that earlier in the show. Yeah, but uh, all right. Well, we're, uh, we're, we're 
towards the end of this program here. Uh, so we just wanted to thank you all for tuning in. We're so excited to be both back in the area for this high school season. You know, for those who don't know, I was still in college last year. I was at Penn State playing my own season for the club team. And, you know, it was it was hard to, A, find time. You know, there was a lot of nights where I'm falling asleep on the <laughs> keyboard, just trying to, trying to grind it out. Uh, and, you know, I only made it to, I want to say, one regular season game uh, in, in the entire season. And that was to see Strath even get killed by Ridley. So, uh, you know, it, it, yeah, it was. And, and um, you know, being able to be back in the area full time, I think is going to be really good for not only the content, but just for us being able to actually bring to life the, you know, the commentary, because last year, like you can only go off game changer. I'm reading stats of kids that I couldn't even pick mm -hmm. them out of a lineup of two people, you know? So I think getting able to, to, uh, to get out there and watch more games is going to be really big for us. But uh, with that being said, we are looking forward to a great season. We thank you for listening. Uh, please send all angry DMs to Ben Thorpe thirty four on Twitter. And I will. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. probably hurt my feelings. I'm gonna uh, try and figure out like a nice little emoji. I'm gonna respond. With. <laughs> uh, just like one. Maybe like, like a food. Um, let's see. Let's. You're gonna, all right, there's a green yo-yo. You're going to get the green yo-yo <laughs> if you send me an angry th th That'll yeah. be uh, Ben underscore Thorpe 34 yep. on, uh, I'm not calling it X, we'll call it on Twitter. But yeah, uh, that's yeah. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, come find us at a game if you see us. We're friendly. We're very friendly. Yeah. We might be a little awkward people, but we're very friendly yeah, people. Uh, as always, thank you for listening. Shout out producer Rob for hooking us up in the studio. We'll see you next time.